seals are good, oxygen's good. Just do what you did last time, and you're fine. Follow my one simple rule. Hella, what's my one simple Listen rule? Listen to Lynn. Boss lady knows best. Exactly. Listen to me. Mining's just like any other job. Go steady, go safe, go home with a pocket full of credits at the end of the day. Yeah, totally. It's just like, um, now I work in the Stardock. Except, uh, with more cave-ins, lasers, and accidental dismemberment. Very helpful. Thank you. Ah, you're gonna be fine. Your first outing was solid. And, you know, let's be honest, it ain't exactly astrophysics. That's why I keep him around. Good pep talks. Yeah, and the fact that I can pinpoint a helium deposit from 300 meters. <laughs> Not untrue. A shame we won't find any down here. But the metal deposits alone should pay for our own helium. Hell, after this, we'll have enough jump fuel to bounce from one end of the settled systems to the next. Hey, more minerals, more money. And so the cycle repeats itself. Just no more unauthorized jumps in the house for room space, okay? He's just a big baby. There are worse lives. You know, most Dusties don't even make it this far. I have a good feeling about you. Right, group hug now or at the end of the shift? One of these days, Hella, I am going to leave you behind. Promises, promises. Okay, let's see what we've got. How are we on time? A uh, little longer. Grab some samples? Always. Uh, but not you. Check on Isabel. Make sure she eases up on the breach. I don't feel like getting buried alive today. Roger that. Remember, Dusty. Keep your breathing steady. And never take that helmet off down here. Oxygen processors don't extend this far. Yeah, because God forbid we drill on a rock with breathable atmosphere. Know what I love about working in Freestyle Collective Space? A job like this in the United Colony? Huh. The red tape. Ugh. Look at this one over here. Calvert! No! Ah, no, no, no! It's a laser, not a sledgehammer! Ease up! Benning, if you got paid per break, you'd be a millionaire! Let's go! Yeah, yeah, okay. What do we say, Dusty? You make your cut? You'll get your cut. No exceptions. Come on, pick it up. Troy, what's the yield? Minimal at this point. Occasional glimmer, but it's weak. What do you think? Stay the course? No, ma'am. Juice ain't worth the squeeze. Well, okay then. Let's call this one tapped. Why don't you move over to that big vein we looked at? Yes, ma'am. Dusty, you're up. Grab a cutter and mine what you can. Metal deposits are in that cavern. I'll shout out when I need you. Glad we're Come off on. this rock. It's time. You're with me.
Okay, take it easy. You were out cold. Uh, no physical damage. Mentally, the jury's still out. You know who you are? New recruit for Argos Extractors? Ring any bells? Any of this look familiar? I haven't looked at your record in some time. Good qualifications. Being a long hauler is basically mining with more sitting down. Well, you got the sample. Client's on his way, then we all get paid. You remember anything that happened? Easy there, High Flyer. Probably just the endorphins kicking in when you passed out. Don't go having an experience on me. You'll walk it off. More importantly, we got what we were looking for. All this trouble for that stupid thing? Huh. Sure don't look like much. Never mind what it looks like. It's worth more than this mine has pulled in all month. We'll be... Our constellation contact is on approach. Wait. The Explorers Group? <laughs> I thought they were kind of a joke. Not a joke. You're just too young to know better. Hey, I'm just saying they got a reputation. Hell, I bet half the crew here doesn't even believe they really exist. Half the crew doesn't believe Earth exists, but it's still there. Same with Constellation. Yeah, come on. Exploring space? <laughs> Who does that anymore? Ain't the space we've already got complicated enough? Not to them, apparently. Barrett 
was being followed every time. Now that was some fine work on the pressure. You dug up the artifact, right? That means you saw it. The visions? You're coming with me to Constellation. You're part of this now. You ever stare up at the stars at night wondering what's out there? Well, that's us. That's where we go. Marvelous. Oh, no, Barrett. No. You think you're just going to take off after the mess you caused? All right. I guess I did just put you all on the Crimson Fleet hit list. How about I stay and I send your Dusty here in my place? I, I, I know, I know, but she's not some miner anymore, Lynn. Soon as she touched that rock, something changed. Don't tell me you can't feel it. Fine. It's a deal. Get out of here, Dusty. You're on to bigger things. Now that we've been attacked... Oh, we've got to pack up and move on. Argos will come for the rest of us. You get going. Just go. Before I say something I regret. Well, now that that's settled... Vasco! Get her to the Lodge! No deviations unless absolutely necessary, okay? Protocol Indigo. Indigo? Again? Very well. Oh, and hey, take this. You'll find it very useful out there. And it even tells the time. fits you perfectly. Now, questions? They're just following the loop, like pirates do. And I have something of a reputation as a loot collector. That, my friend, is the million credit question. And Constellation can find the answer, with your help. See, that's the problem with the settled systems. Too easy to take everything for granted. While everyone else is busy playing politics, we're the ones braving the unknown, charting the vastness of space. Without us, the galaxy is just a big room with the lights turned out. Technically, it's not even mine. Consider it alone. Vasco will keep you on course. Besides, I'm making an exception since you can tell Constellation about that vision you had. Come on. You're really not at all curious about that light music show you experienced? Why it only affected you? Because if you didn't notice, we've all been handling it since with no problem. The way I see it, Constellation needs that artifact, but they also need you. This mystery is only getting bigger each step we take. And you're part of it now. And Vasco, don't let her break my ship. <laughs> it appears you are the new captain of the Frontier. Just up the ramp, Captain. I'll be in the external robotics bay. Captain, I assume you know how to fly a Class A starship. As Barrett likes to say, it's as easy as learning to ride a bike. I will attempt to boost the shields, just in case there are any difficulties. Shields ready. The rest is up to you. Curious, these are...
United Colonies markings, but we are in Free Star Collective space. It then stands to reason that this was once a secret UC facility. Captain. I have often asked Barrett that same question at various times and about various individuals that wanted to cause us harm. The most likely answer is that Barrett personally insulted him, typically by continuing to live, usually after escaping from certain death, and often with an object multiple people wanted. Constellation is an explorer's society founded over 50 years ago with the mission of seeking out the unknown. Members often engage in expeditions in small groups, typically one or two people, or like Barrett and myself, one person and one robot. The membership is intentionally limited and small. Should you join Constellation yourself, you will be the 10th active member. I am relieved you have given up on carrying everything yourself. ship keys out of his cold, dead hands. We don't have a problem with Barrett. We want that ship, the Frontier. If you're the captain of it now, that means we're after you. Oh, <laughs> no. You see, maybe your colleague Barrett didn't tell you, but there's a bit of a legend surrounding that ship. That constellation keeps treasure hidden in the cargo bays, the loot from a hundred planets, and it's going to be ours. That statement is partially correct. The frontier has been to many planets and moons, but the only things held in the cargo bays are spare parts, dust, desiccated food particles, and a variety of species of ant. I don't care what kind of lies Barrett programmed that robot to say. We're taking that ship. If he were here, Barrett would say he was proud of you for asking that. The answer is no. 
So you got past a few rooks. Who cares? They aren't? You sure? Constellation ship for nothing? Get out of here. Take your robot and your ship and get out of here. I see you all again, you're dead. Let me guess. Protocol Indigo again? The Trade Authority runs a vending kiosk next to my booth. It's just off to the side, near the ramp. Besides that, Jemison Mercantile is your closest shop if you're looking for a bit of everything. That's further in, past the security checkpoints. I would try to viewport. It'll be on your left once you get into the plaza. Everything looks good here. I'll be at my booth if you need me. Directly to the Mast District. Everyone will be in the library, just inside. If Barrett were here, he'd probably tell you that you're part of something bigger now, and he hopes you'll make this place your home. Welcome to Constellation. We have a lot to talk about. Would you care to tell us what happened to our friend? Why you're here and he isn't? Hmm. Very well. This is a private organization dedicated to exploration. Space primarily, but also anomalies throughout the settled systems. It's inherently dangerous work, so if one of our own doesn't show up as planned, then we tend to have questions. Speaking of which, where is Barrett? I see. Vasco, verify. All statements made have been factual. Oh, this is just typical. Barrett hands over our ship and our robot to some random employee of that discount mining outfit he uses. Walter. And if we hadn't insisted on installing those emergency protocols, I guarantee you this rock breaker here would be halfway to Neon. But that didn't happen. She's here, with the artifact. Thank you, Matteo. Now, let's focus on what's in front of us, shall we? What happened when it was extracted? Did anyone see anything? Hear anything? We think it's anyone else who pulls one out of the rock for the first time. Why? We're not sure yet. So if you wouldn't mind adding another data point. Interesting. Similar to Barrett's description of the experience, with less embellishment. Whether it happened or not wasn't in doubt. But honestly, Country, did you expect us to believe in fairy tales? If this is the greatest mystery in the universe, why couldn't it be part of the ultimate mystery? 
But gentlemen, can we please focus? Noel, I think it's time we tested your theory. Right. Let's see. We know the artifacts react to each other. The pieces we already have move when they're in close contact. Now, if we add this new one to the two we already have... The artifact. If you could place it on the table here. That's it. Just like the others. And to imagine, we thought there were only two of them at first. Oh my god, that's it. They're reacting. Look at how it's coming together. That energy that's arcing between them, no manufactured material in the settled systems can do that. None of them. This proves that... Easy, girl. Breathe. You'll have a heart attack. She's not the only one. If they're coming together, that means there's a set. Built by an intelligence outside the settled systems. Still 2,000 credits for our little wager, Godric? You're on, Walter. Well, if we had all the answers, it wouldn't be exciting, now would it? Not to take away from the moment, but what are we going to do about our new friend here? <laughs> so, are you ready to get to work? See if exploration is the life you want to lead in this little universe of ours? We're all here because we're committed to exploring space. Humanity may have settled the stars, but that doesn't mean we should stop diving into the unknown. Beyond that, you'll be expected to use your own judgment, just like the rest of us. Individually, they're just odd hunks of metal, another oddity from the uncharted reaches of space. As to what they are, what they're building, well, you'll be part of solving that puzzle now. You should take some time to get settled in. Introduce yourself to everyone. Some of our members aren't here, but you'll meet them soon. Come find me when you're ready. You and I are going to be doing some traveling together. Get your feet wet. And here, I think you've earned something for bringing the artifact to us. In addition to credits, why don't we set you up with a backpack with some boost capability? Hmm? You'll need it out in the field anyway. Just mind your head. Lately, I find myself spending more and more time here. Business has appealed to me, but this is exciting. Well, I suppose calling you a rock breaker may have been a bit out of line. I am sorry I besmirched your chosen profession and made assumptions about your character. My frustrations lie more with Barrett. Not the first time his shenanigans have jeopardized one of our ventures. Not fair of me to take it out on you, especially since it would seem he made the right call this time. So, let's start over, shall we? Walter Stroud, CEO of Stroud Eklund, member of Constellation, and oft-times grumpy old man. Welcome aboard. By the way, in addition to a place to stay, the Lodge has a wealth of modification and research equipment. Spacesuit customization, pharmaceutical manufacturing, testing alien substances, the whole thing. You can even fashion industrial pieces for large-scale projects, if you don't mind extracting a few raw resources from a nearby planet, that is. I'm a fan of self-reliance, so I encourage you to make use of the tools we have to build what you need. Up until very recently, I'd likely have dismissed it as, I don't know, hallucinations. But now, I'm not sure what to think. I don't suppose you have a history of this sort of thing, do you? Yes, I imagined as much. Barrett expressed something similar in his own unique way. I'm no scientist. 
I leave that to the likes of Barrett and young Noel there. But I think we can all agree there's something unusual going on here. Frankly, this is the most exciting thing that's happened in years. That was intense, wasn't it? The artifacts, I mean. Sorry, this must all be a little overwhelming for you right now. I guess a lot overwhelming, now that I think about it. I'm Noelle. Artifacts it's really nice to meet you. And thank you for bringing the artifact to us. It's the occasional payoff. Good thing you've got me around, Ms. Morgan. Who knows how you'd get by on your own. Oh, right, that. You and I both know if we're approaching this rationally, I suppose we'd call them visual and auditory hallucinations. What you perceived as lights and music could be overloaded neural input, your brain's attempt to make sense of something, an energy surge, some other phenomenon. He did. At the time, well, it's Barrett. We weren't sure if he was kidding around. Clearly, he wasn't. Sure, I'm not trying to suggest otherwise. I wasn't there when it happened. I'm just thinking it through. That's okay. Now that this has happened to both you and Barrett, we can know to maybe expect it in the future. Be a little more prepared. We're all in this together now, right? Planning on sticking around then? Good. I think we can find a spot for you. And along the way, I can give you the very abbreviated tour. So this is the bar, usually no tender, so help yourself, within reason, of course. Now let's see about that room. You're in luck. We were almost at max occupancy already, but there's still one room up for grabs. It's been nice having the place so full. Okay, this'll be you. Common room on one side, so that'll be quiet, and Mateo on the other side, so maybe a little less quiet. I'm sure Sarah has something planned for each of us, so... I'd better get back to it. Don't want to keep her waiting too long. Enjoy! ready to get to work? Or was there something else? How is that not a problem for you, Mike? That is a rather personal question. Not much, but you've seen them for yourself. It doesn't take a lot to realize we're dealing with something extraordinary. Just what that is, we'll have to figure out. It's what we do. I don't know what you've heard, but I can imagine. First of all, I think you can dismiss any stories about us no longer existing. Hmm? I don't believe in smearing our name everywhere we can. Exploring the universe, charting the unknown, that's what counts. Besides, having a little mystery gives us room to maneuver. A fixed reputation could fence us in a lot of ways. We're explorers. Humanity has always hunted for knowledge in the unknown. We just take that a little more seriously than others. We were founded decades ago by a man named Sebastian Banks. He wanted a small group of people from all corners of the settled systems dedicated to the biggest question of all. What's out there? These artifacts could be everything we've been looking for. Another great secret the universe is asking us to unravel. We're going to be doing some old-fashioned detective work. The artifacts are relatively inert once they're out of bedrock. That means people can pass them around, not even knowing what they are. I've been letting my contacts know to be on the lookout for strange metal objects. Get back a lot of noise, usually. But a tip from the UC Vanguard sounds promising.
we have to assume that we're not the only ones to have stumbled into this mystery. But most people aren't going into space looking for the unknown. They're looking for places to settle, resources to extract, territory to defend. An odd-looking rock or a single strange hunk of metal wouldn't mean much to them. That's why Constellation exists, in a way. To put pieces like this together. Felt the same way when I started, too. There's an electricity in the air when you know you're about to uncover something. But it's not just that. I want to take this opportunity to see how you handle yourself, and for you to learn more about us. I'm going to be sticking with you for this. We'll be traveling together until we either find an artifact, or this lead runs dry. We'll need to head to Mast. Check in with the Vanguard recruiting office where my contact works. And listen, whatever you were before, or whatever you do once you're out there, I don't care. So long as you don't bring UC security to our doorstep. Every member of Constellation is their own conscience. Understood? Good. Let's take a little stroll through New Atlantis, shall we? We need to talk to John Tuala in Mast. You can thank Barrett for that, if he's still around to thank when this is all said and done. Honestly, he took this seriously before any of us. It was at his urging that we started doing deep space scans. I will admit, it was something of a shock to see Barrett taking anything seriously. Sarah, good to see you. Who's your friend? Hopefully Constellation's newest member. Thought I'd run through some legwork together. Ah, uh, another space explorer. Hey, you ever think of joining up with the Vanguard? Help the United Colonies, earn some credits, even get your UC citizenship? United Colonies Volunteer Fleet. Independent captains enlist, get to use their own ships, and the UC provides them with sustained work and credits. And put in your time and your guaranteed UC citizenship and everything that comes with it. Discounts on UC goods and medical services, chance to own a place in New Atlantis. Only way a foreign captain could even dream of seeing those sorts of benefits. So, you want in? All right, all right. Can't blame me for trying, right? I mean, I still haven't given up on getting Sarah to re-enlist. It's a game we play. He asks, I say no. Here's what I got for you two. Vanguard volunteer by the name of Moera. Helps patrol the old neighborhood. Sol, Mars, Neptune, you know. The Sol system? Which Admiral did he upset to get that posting? He's Martian, born and raised. Not like I can get anyone else to care. Word is he's got some fancy metal ornament he's been showing off to the old grounders. Matches that description Sarah gave me. Oh, he goes way back. I think he was recruit number 81 or something. You kidding? Lowest posting request rate in the whole fleet. Only thing there the UC cares about is Mars. And no one wants to go to Mars. They want to get off Mars. Soul system is a lot of planets, but a vet like Moera will be checking in at Sidonia on the regular. You mean hitting the bars, don't you, John? Hey, nothing wrong with a little refresh between patrols. Yeah, bring a coloring book. You get so used to seeing red, you'll forget what blues and greens look like. You'll have to ask him, but Vanguard volunteers have retrieval rights if they get into a scrap. Wouldn't be surprised if he found it off of a pirate or something like that. Anything for Sarah. UC always takes care of its own. Even the prodigal children. No, oh, brother. I'm serious about that recruitment offer, by the way. You just come talk to me when you're ready. UC is a good friend to have. Fine by me.
My parents considered themselves to be enlightened, but their lives were so busy they rarely pursued their beliefs. By the time I was old enough to start questioning these things, the idea of following any organized religion was almost an afterthought. It's not that I don't want to believe in anything, it's that my scientific mind is often at odds with my spiritual center. Having been out there, in the Starfield, seeing all those magnificent wonders with my own eyes, I need answers, not religious theory. I'm sorry if that disappoints you. Don't worry. While we're on this journey together, I fully intend to respect your religious beliefs. You mean, apart from being the chair of Constellation for the past five years? Well, let's see. I pride myself with my aptitude for astrodynamics, calculating optimal trajectories for grav jumping. That's been quite useful in the past. And as far as planetary exploration, my area of expertise is botany. So, don't worry. I won't let you eat anything that might put you in the hospital. <laughs> Very well. Next time, then. since I've been to Mars. Soul system doesn't get a lot of traffic. We're on it, sir. Building Sidonia completely underground was a clever way of keeping the city shielded from the harsh Martian landscape. If you're going to use the elevators or stairs to reach the other levels, try to keep them clean. I hate filing litter reports. Plenty. But if I went blabbing them to any rando that walks into my bar, no one would ever tell me anything around here. You don't do this job for 45 years by losing your customer's trust. See? That's what I'm talking about. You give respect, you get respect. I'm glad you understand. What's your poison? You ain't been around. Went off on patrol. Hasn't been back in since. We're starting to think it might be time to pour one out to the blackest sea. You got another word for it? He means outer space. Ma'am. You in the service? I know the feeling, but, uh, you just get so used to losing people. Look, nothing more I'd love than to help out a fellow Martian. Especially, one that's missing. But, <clears throat> He has a tab, and you don't know if he's coming back. It's a lot of credits, okay? I let it slide for a long time because he's a regular, but... If I'm out all that money, I got problems. What do you say? No, oh, I've done this routine. Let's skip to the part where you admit you're lying about what he owes. You call me a liar? I'll throw both of you out of this bar right now. Oh, please. Two strangers arrive from Offworld asking for information only you have. You see an opportunity. Everyone always does. Lower the price. Don't think we can't find another way to get what we want. Fan. Agreed on a discount, right? Let me confirm the amount. Okay. Let's talk. Last time he was here, Moera kept yelling about the Lady of Love, <laughs> singing songs, all that kind of thing. Venus? That's only one planet. Hardly an entire patrol route. 
I got what I got, okay? Oh, fine. We'll make do. Someone else came in and said hello. Oh, this won't be your last encounter with the spacer crew. They pillage abandoned facilities and shoot anyone who gets in their way. They're even less organized than the Crimson Fleet. Just countless desperate groups scavenging and killing to survive.
low of a temperature. Am I glad to meet whoever you two are? Looks like we're all in one piece. Any day you walk away from, right? Ecliptic mercs. They'll work for anyone. And vanguards don't exactly make friends with local pirates, thieves, and scavengers. I think enough of them finally got fed up and they pooled their money to hire professionals. What? You guys still exist? Man, I've only heard stories. We've heard stories too, about a strange object you found on patrol. So, you know what that thing is. I tried to hawk it in Sidonia, and the guy thought I was peddling phony titanium. Mm, it doesn't play nice with scanners. It'd be worthless to someone trying to flip rare minerals quickly. So you're saying I shouldn't be using it as a hood ornament? Oh, that. Yeah, I mean, it's been a mess lately. Spacers, Varun Zealots, plus Ecliptic tracking me down. We ran into a few members of Ecliptic at the Nova Galactic Star Yard. I'm guessing they were after you. Ah, damn. That's probably how they found me. I knew taunting the Spacers to meet me at Neptune was a long shot. Making rookie mistakes. I've been chasing shadows around the Sol system for years. And every time I go back to Mars... Sidonia is waiting for you. Run down. Forgotten. Feels like everyone's given up, you know? I've just been spending more and more time in the Starfield. Sometimes I wonder if I'm really going back. Yeah? You know, that's actually kind of tempting. I'd have to settle some things back on Sidonia. Maybe hit me up there later. If you don't mind, we came here for something. That strange object you found? Right. Hey, it's yours. Appreciate the rescue. Hope you figure out whatever that thing is. Let's grab the artifact. this. Welcome to Constellation. As a full member this time. Honestly, this just makes it more official. Call it right person, right place, right time. But once the artifacts started coming together, you were one of us. We're going to do great things together. All of us. By the way, how would you like to keep traveling together? I'm not sitting behind my desk for this. These artifacts are a new chapter for Constellation, and I'm going to be out there for it. And I want you out there as well. You got results. <laughs> I need someone like you watching my back. All right. We've got a few more leads we should talk about. First, there's an expedition that Samco has been putting together. It's in Free Star Collective Space, and he knows it inside and out. There's also the Eye, our star station in orbit. About time for you to meet Vladimir. He's been hard at work tracking down more anomalies. And last but not least, Noel. Have we heard anything from Barrett yet? A courier from Argos Extractors came by to let us know they're packing up the operation on Vectera. But that's it, no other word. Mm, that's not good. We should get over there and check on Barrett in person. 
Oh, that's right. He wasn't here when we first showed up. He should be back by now. I'll let him handle the introductions. If I steal his thunder, I'll never hear the end of it. We maintain a star station in orbit above us. It's where we do all our deep space scanning. Vladimir runs the station. Brilliant astronomer. Years of practical experience. I cannot wait to meet her. It's been ages since Constellation has had someone new. I wonder what she's like. Just go easy on him. Being interrogated by a kid ain't exactly the best way to make a first impression. I'll limit it to the really important stuff, Dad. Well, this does not bode well. And you must be the latest poor fool to get dragged into our dysfunctional little family. No. Funny story, I caught this one stealing my ship. Only reason I didn't turn her in is because we have the same last name. Dad. <laughs> All right. That's my one. Whoa. I know a few dark sides of the Aquila moons, but if you're looking for deep history lessons, well, I'm going to fall asleep before you do. Trust me. Don't encourage him. Koriko, by the way. Hi, hi. It helps to have a good teacher. Dad, don't let it go to your head. Sam? <laughs> Not let it go to his head? <laughs> Impossible. A compliment from little Cora. It's not even my birthday. Now, let's talk business. Sarah tell you about the expedition? Sure enough, that's where we're heading. The three of us are heading to Aquila, for a settled planet of the Freestar Collective and, not coincidentally, the home of their capital, Aquila City. We'll land in the city's spaceports, but the frontier is our goal. It's a rough country. Spawned a lot of stories. And I got a lead on a tale that um, makes me think one thing. Artifact. Yeah, don't piss off the Freestar Rangers. As far as the Collective is concerned, they're judge, jury, and executioner. They're the good guys, but that don't make them any less dangerous. Outside that, just don't be an asshole. Okay, we'll meet you on board your ship. Talk more when we get there. Once we land on Aquila, it's gonna be you and me. So if you want to do any freewheeling before then, Cora and I will just be riding passenger. It's all important, but if you want a direction, I'd grab Barrett first. He's not just an old friend. He's been all over the settled systems. His mind is always somewhere, but there's no arguing his knack for being in the right place at the wrong time. Oh, too bad he couldn't see the artifacts coming together. But knowing him, he'll be so excited when he gets a look, it won't occur to him that he's missed anything. By Vectera, by Vectera, by Vectera! I can't believe it! Is it you? Is it really, really you? Captain of the Frontier, Bane of the Fleet, Constellation's shining star of stars. Oh, don't be so modest. It was all over SSNN. Lone Miner tames the Crimson Fleet, saves a member of Constellation, and steals the hearts of millions, no, trillions. And now, you're standing here, next to me? Oh, really is you, right? Then the day is truly blessed. Because for a moment, I wasn't sure if you were real or just another hallucination. But now that I know it's you, what are the odds? And to think, 
I almost went for coffee instead. But I changed my routine for one day, and here you are. It's almost like it was meant to be. I know, right? And you can try to fight destiny, but you probably aren't going to win. Although, if I'm being honest, I'd wager you could beat just about anything, even theoretical concepts. But why would you, in this case? Either way, it's such an honor to meet you. Hey, do you mind if I follow you around? Do you need a sidekick? What am I saying? You're a hero, of course you do! Lead the way! You won't be disappointed! operation well you're back oh no don't start I've had enough Barrett for one lifetime I don't need the sequel showing up on my doorstep more pirates showed up when you were gone we weren't as lucky this time Calvert Troy some of the new dusties they didn't make it You're right. You tell yourself you got deadlines, that the credits are what matter. But it's people doing the job, not machines. You think if you're strict with them that they'll focus on the work. Give you a little distance if things go wrong. But you want them to win. Every boss does. Anyway, I was pinned down behind some crates with Barrett. Bullets and laser fire everywhere. No smile on that damn carefree face of his, like he knew this was it. I started stealing myself to go out fighting. Then that idiot puts his hand on my shoulder and says, stay here, Lin. I got you. Not quite. Barrett is more dangerous than you might think. Next thing I know, two of the pirates are dead, and he's got the third one in a headlock, drags him out into the open at gunpoint, and demands to talk, or else I'm going to demonstrate Newton's third law on this guy's temporal lobe. And that's when they brought out Hella. <sighs> I didn't overhear everything, but after the ten longest seconds of my life, Barrett put his hands up, and both of them ended up getting taken aboard the pirate ship. And that's the last I saw of either of them. They could have grab jumped anywhere. I tried pinging a transmission to the ship in the comms building before they left, but the pirates must have fried it. You want to try it? Go ahead. But the odds of them being alive, even if you could find them... <sighs> I've lost a lot of people on this run, Dusty. I just want to pack up. You wanna try fixing that computer? Go ahead. I'm fine, Dusty. In this line of work, you make do. Even when the worst happens. Don't see what good it will do since they're already gone, but fine. Here. 
you need any more, feel free to scavenge around. Only managed to scrounge up one so far. I'm sure there's more around. actually get that computer working again? What? Let me see that. <laughs> Funny. Even knowing he's alive, I still never want to see him again. Hella, on the other hand. Okay. Let me send you the location data embedded in the transmission. Find them, okay? What? Really? Uh, not really cut out for whatever it is people like you and Barrett do, but it might not be a bad time to think about a career change after all this. If you have room in your crew for an outpost supervisor, maybe we can talk. Be a while before Argos comes to pick me up. I'll be here if you need me. And hey, if you ever need a little extra help, I've been thinking about a career change lately. Maybe it's time to put Argos behind me. Seems like you've been keeping busy, Dusty. If, uh, you find yourself in need of a capable traveling companion, we should talk. My contract's up with Argos, and I could use a change of scenery. Sure. I don't mind taking orders from a former employee. It can't be worse than working for Barrett. <laughs> After this mess? Certainly. It's just a job. Nothing to get sentimental about. Works for me. I'm not fussy about assignments. I'll go where I need it. Right. I'll get to work. Let's catch up later. I suppose that wouldn't kill me. No, I don't. I only ask as many questions as I need to get my job done. I had no idea it was dangerous. No. Whatever that thing was, it's the only one I've ever seen. I'm glad it's not my problem anymore. Come back.
Thanks for taking the time to talk. I wanted to ask you about the artifact you found on Bectera. When you pulled it from the rock, held it in your hands for the first time, how did you feel? No, no, I, I don't think you understand. I know about the visions, the light, and the music. How did you feel inside? What were your thoughts? Oh my goodness, that must have been terrifying. When it comes to the artifacts, it never ceases to amaze me how the science, well, simply fails. If there is, the artifacts are doing a heck of a job hiding it. The artifacts are so different, so alien, and I'm certain one of them reached out and spoke to you. Quite the mystery. Well, judging from the fact that both you and Barrett claim to have heard music, I've made the leap that the artifact was reaching out. Music composition might not consist of words and sentences, but I'll be damned if that isn't an attempt at language. Agreed. Unfortunately, there's no way that I know of to reply. And believe me, I've been trying to gather data on the damn things for years. Oh, no, not at all. There's so much going on there, I can't afford to divert all of our resources. But I have classified the artifacts as a priority project. Frustrating? No. Bewildering? Yes. It would be... Oh, well, an explorer's dream to solve a mystery like this. I knew I picked the right person for the job. Look. I wanted to thank you for taking the time to talk, and for keeping an open mind. And I also wanted to say, well, I'm pleased we're on this journey together. <laughs> it's the best decision I've made in quite a long time. Oh, hey, it's you. And here I thought you were some pirate coming back to kill me. Lucky me, right? And don't leave out any details. Man, I was so terrified when I got pulled on board that pirate ship. There it was all. Sorry, brother. I'll get us out of this. Trust me. Mm, not <laughs> what you and I would call a plan, necessarily. Oh, I'm getting to that. He tells me we need to start pretending to fight each other. <laughs> Trick the pirates into thinking they need to come in before one of us gets killed. I just remember him shouting, This kid is a killer. How am I supposed to defend myself against these hurly whites? He's gonna bite my face off. I mean... <laughs> I didn't think it would work, but they came in. All of a sudden, we were wrestling with two of them. The Barrett reached for one of their guns. Bingo. Blasted the pilot right in the back. <laughs> Through to the flight console. And dropped orbit like a rock off a high rise. <sighs> I blacked out. And when I came to, there he was, smiling like it was just another day on the job. You missed the fun part, Heller. I mean, I go through all the trouble of saving your butt, and you weren't even awake to notice. Then he did the little 
finger gun thing. Well, no, I don't think so. I caught him holding his ribs a few times. <laughs> Favorite his left leg a bit, you know? Oh, yeah. Probably should have talked about that first. <laughs> Did I mention I'm on a lot of painkillers? So, I was real excited when a ship showed up. <laughs> then, less excited when I realized it was a Crimson Fleet ship. And then, really, really less excited when Barrett said, it's okay, I got this. He mumbled something to him, and then they were all gone. I was drifting in and out. But, uh, I think I heard the word ransom. I was drifting in and out, but... Yeah, I think so. Got a signal from the ship before they grab jumped. Guessing it was Barrett. Haven't really been in a good <clears throat> space to have a listen. Here you go. Hey, uh, uh, I should come with you, right? I don't think anyone else is coming. Yeah, just, uh, don't ask me to operate any heavy machinery for a while. Uh, give me a minute. I think the worst of it is... Yeah, I'll be all right. I'll be all right. Ready to wisecrack with the best of them. Let me know when you want to head out. Still think there might be a spot for me on your ship? I gotta get off this rock. Uh, don't worry about me. I'm a tough cookie. The painkillers are starting to work. I'll be just fine after a good nap. Whew. Oh, I'm glad to hear you say that. For a second there, I thought you were gonna leave me behind. What's on the agenda today? You got it. Catch you on the flip side, boss. Thanks for letting me tag along. You've given the fleet a lot of trouble, Barrett. Hey, since when is surviving being attacked causing trouble? Isn't that just fighting back? Hey, pilot, could you move your arm a little bit to the left? I can't make out the console. Don't move! He's trying to figure out our destination, probably transmitting this conversation right now while we're still in orbit. Well, yeah, thought I was making that pretty obvious. Okay, okay, put the gun down. I'm done. See? My retinas are pointing away from the console towards this lovely view of space we have out the window. Time up. Once we get back to the base, the fun starts. certainty to the universe at all. Once you really start getting out there, the laws of physics kind of turn into suggestions.
Matsuo the Grim? Honestly, a pretty nice guy as far as pirates go. I think I butted heads with his mentor once years back. Had the same kind of surprisingly hospitable vibe. Hey, you're underselling my harrowing escape from certain doom here. A little charm goes a long way when the knives are out. Honestly, I was kind of rolling the dice with you. But hey, sometimes a bet pays off. Please, go on. I think about it a lot. There's so many possibilities. Some wonderful, some terrifying. I'm not a fearful man, but I am just a man. And I'm keenly aware that this artifact could change my life. Or end it. On Bendy? No, wait. It was Kazal. Uh, I can feel Lin's admonishing stare boring a hole in my back. She's not actually standing behind me, is she? Well, point is, my story is probably a lot like yours. We dug a pit, found some really wonky readings, and followed them to the artifact. Well, he certainly means something, because not everyone who touches the artifacts sees them. My first instinct was it was a message of some kind, like the Voyager. Communication from a higher life form reaching out blindly into space. But now I'm wondering if the vision wasn't just sensory. My new theory is something's changed in us physiologically. As in not just a message from beyond, but a delivery. Well, when I picked it up, I had no idea what it was. I knew it was something spectacular. I saw a vision, flashing lights, the whole shebang. Dust off complete. place to recharge and ready ourselves for our next mission. Barrett, we were worried sick. Well, some of us were. I am at your service. I Captain. see what you did there, Walter. And I know you've been secretly crying into your piles of money just waiting for my return. Actually, Walter has been complaining about you more than usual, which is always a sign when he's worried. Don't stop. I am at your service, Captain. Wait. Is that? <laughs> and to think the first artifact was taking up dust on the library show. Now look at them all. You feel it a bit, can't you? Ever since I found the second one, had the visions. Being around them is just comforting. So hey, I I'm still not a hundred percent, plus I feel guilty dragging you into all of this. Why don't I stick around? help you get adjusted to the weird corners of the universe. It doesn't really matter to me. We we'll never get too attached to ships. After the fifth or sixth time one blows up and you get marooned. The romance fades. Plus the frontier is a constellation ship. And you're one of us now. So it's just as much yours as mine at this point. Marvelous. Yes. I hope you do. All right. Yes, Sam. of course it's now for you. Anyway, I figured you might have a use for it. You're quite welcome. Oh, come on, Sarah. If I see anything on our next expedition to a planet, then I'll hang on to it for you. I'm glad you're back. Let's get moving. Sarah! Sarah. 
Good to see you again, my dear friend. I expect to hear some exciting tales when you two return. I'll try, but I doubt any of them will compare to the spectacular tales that we hear you spin. We got a rook on deck. Good to see Constellation getting some fresh blood. Former Crimson Fleet. An old Jacobons would be the term for it, back in my day. Left that life behind me. Even before I signed up with Constellation, I was retired. Glad you two finally have a chance to meet. Wish I could have been down at the Lodge to see the artifacts come together. But I got a little lost peeking through the eye. That one's all on me. The eye is the nickname for the star station. Think of it as one big telescope. <laughs> Probably would have just gotten annoyed at being bothered. I'll catch a smile at our next big revelation. You know there's more to come. Now, this station... The Eye. Rigged up for deep space scans. Barrett and Sarah teased out the signs of where our artifacts could be hiding after we caught our second one. But the data takes a slow ride along the Sea of Light. Years or decades between us and the fringes of space without a grav drive. No matter how good the scan, it's still just peeking at light, and she only has one speed. Ultimately, we're not looking at a planet. We're looking at the radiation coming off a planet. And that takes years to get here. Lot of interstellar bodies in the way, too. All that noise makes squaring the circle harder. Only going to be able to give you so many at once. You won't be the only constellation out there. Andresia and Matteo are both following up on scans themselves. Matteo went out recently, but Andresia, it's been a while. Hate to pull a worried old man act on you, but I'm an old man, and I'm worried. Another rook in Constellation who's making a name for herself likes to be on her own. I can relate, so I try to look out for her more than most. Yes, indeed. Stop worrying so much, Vladimir. If she's out there, we'll find her. She should be at one of the two sites I've marked on your star map. Can take care of herself, but we all need backup sometimes. Anyway, hopefully you'll be catching Fortune's smile, and we'll have some more artifacts to take a closer look at. Happy hunting. Usually it doesn't. I'm overdrawn from Lady Luck three times over. It's a long tale to tip your ear on, but if you ever wanted to visit, I have a house out there in the Starfield. Thought I was going to see life's eclipse from there, but Constellation swept me away. Haven't been there since we started on the eye. If you do go there, turn the lights off when you leave, okay?
Don't come any closer. Identify yourself. I am fine. He was clumsy. Made far too much noise. Easy to deal with. You have not answered my question. Who are you? Ah, oh, good. I suppose I should have guessed. It has been too long since I checked in. I'm just glad we found you unharmed, Andresia. Vladimir and I were worried. You are the newest member, yes? Do they often send you to check up on other, more senior members? Perhaps. I suspect Vladimir worried you might find me on the ground, instead of this one. We waste time. We should complete our mission and then we can talk. Another loser? Another notch on my gun. How are you easing into things, Andresia? Is our mutual acquaintance helping with the transition to this new way of life for you? Remember our last conversation, when you told me the artifacts made you feel like you were being pulled across the entire galaxy? Well, it got me thinking, so I dove into our archives and started looking through Constellation's older journal entries. Just because I wasn't familiar with the experience you described, doesn't mean the same might have been true for my predecessor. Really? I'm surprised that I haven't. After reading those journals, all of the pleasant memories of my time spent with Arja just started flooding back. Aja Mamasa. She was the youngest member of Constellation when it was founded. Only took her 15 years to reach chair. Sorry, I sometimes get so caught up in my own bubble, I forget that I wasn't the first. Oh yes, absolutely. I, I didn't mean to compare. Those were just... Oh, I don't know. Different times. Aja was the one that taught me the ropes at Constellation, and took me under her wing as her protégé. <laughs> now that you mention it, you're probably right. Either way, we logged quite a few interesting discoveries together. Honestly, it wasn't so much what Aja and I discovered in our travels. It was the journey that was memorable. Exactly. For me, it was all about the quieter moments. There was nothing quite like sitting back and watching space bend while listening to Aja spin vivid stories to fill the time. Oh, I find that sort of Cozy isolation, the best way to really get to know someone. I'll take that as a compliment. Thank you. You know, all this talk about Aja reminds me that my time with her was a gift. I miss her dearly. No. She retired. Living on Porima 2 now, I think. Come to think of it, if we're ever out that far, perhaps we could pay her a visit, and I could make proper introductions. Well, I don't expect you to be a carbon copy of Aja. Just be yourself. You see, it's clear that we share the same hunger to discover what's out there. And that, well, that's what intrigues me about you. I... I don't know if I deserve to be that close to anyone right now. If you knew about the things that I've done, the way my life's unfolded, I think your opinion of me might change. Please... Give me some time. I, 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 I have to go.
not respond when I called to you after you pulled out the artifact. Does that mean Barrett's theory and experience were correct? The artifact grants the first person who touches it a vision? The fact that it has happened to both you and Barrett is already more than we had before. I think it is important that we discuss what you saw back there. That man. What I had done. It was, yes. I appreciate that you see it that way. A very practical outlook, not one I find is shared amongst members of Constellation. May I ask what your background is? Argos. I have heard of this company. Small, reckless, Interesting. I do not have experience with this profession, but I have my own experiences with... <sighs> ...risk. We both seem to be... ...unusual additions to Constellation. Please, I would ask that you not mention to Vladimir the... ...the circumstances in which you found me. This is not the first time that... Varun zealots have attempted to corner me. If it is known that this has happened again... Well, it has been a while since I was given an assignment on my own. I would not want it to be... even longer in the future. Do you understand? Mom? This means we are in agreement. Thank you. That is good to know. I will finish here and return to New Atlantis when I can. You should go now, as they will be expecting us. I will meet you back at the lodge. Struts retracting. Let's get out of here. Landing site locked. Take us in. Jake's 
better than Madame Sauvage's place. <laughs> Tribute to the mission? No, of course not. We thought you might be hurt. Oh, I then thank you, but it was not necessary. We succeeded. Do something new today, shall we? Look at you two. I'm jealous. I tried following up on some leads myself, but came back empty handed. They could be anywhere, can't they? Embedded in a rock, or in the hands of an unsuspecting novelty goods trader? A couple of scans from the eye, but it looks like you got there first. Shame on me for taking the scenic route, huh? I catch myself just staring at the collection sometimes, wondering what it all means. Maybe that's how our ancestors felt when they were looking up at the stars for the first time. They didn't just gawk at the stars, Mateo. They explored. They tested. Science brought us to space, not daydreaming. I disagree. What's the point of science if not to enable humanity's dreams? And where do those dreams come from? Not every dream is a pleasant one. I agree with Noel. The work is what moves us forward. You're with me, right? Science or dreams? Which one is the true muse of space exploration? Exactly! We can't forget what really makes us human. Genes and evolution are what made us human, Mateo. Both of you clearly need to go back to school. Dreams are wonderful, but they don't pay for Helium-3. Constellation's bank account can attest to that. You know what? I just realized I completely overtook this whole conversation. This should be about you and Andresia celebrating a win for the group. I do not mind being asked to join in a debate. It was good to hear everyone's sides. But I do agree that we accomplished something together. Thank you for your help. Yes, so am I. Let me know if you need me. Noel, pulling some interesting data from those new artifacts. Tell the Rook to meet me back on board the station. Roger that, Vladimir. She's on her way. Now that those artifacts aren't just blips of hope in the Black Sea, I found an interesting pattern. The grav anomaly generated by one of those artifacts? It matches one on another planet. A bigger one. This one has been in my list of possible artifact sites for a while, but the profile didn't quite match. Now that we've got more artifacts, the similarities are as clear as day. All right, let me transfer over the data. But I need you wearing caution's boots for this one. No telling what this thing is or why it's so large. Going to send you the mark close as I can, but I'm having trouble pinpointing the source. You'll need to explore the area on foot. Put your scanner to work. Don't know what you'll find. Keep your eyes open. No, just need to follow your scanner to the real destination. Might be a boot's journey, but that's the explorer's lot sometimes. And from there, maybe you catch a smile and uncover the source of it all.
initiated. Watch your flaring. Exploration is my entire life. I consider it both a career and recreation. That being said, I will make a confession, but you have to promise to keep it between us. Before I graduated from school, I was in a band. And no, I don't mean the school band. I mean a rock band. We called ourselves Ironic Comet. <laughs> A ridiculous name, I know, but uh, we were just a bunch of teenagers getting together and having fun. And before you ask, no, I wasn't the lead singer. I actually played the drums. The band never really went anywhere, of course, but those were good times, and I remember them fondly. reacting to our presence. Those rings in particular. Crix's bones. Look at you. If you don't mind, I'm gonna start doing some scans. Like, right now. We were right about the anomaly, weren't we? Tip our ears on the tail. An entire building generating a signature just like the artifact. Um, Vladimir? Look at these readings. Cardiovascular and neurological levels aren't in the normal range. I think we're going to need a little demonstration. Mind putting the paces to it? Everyone saw that, right? Like a literal gift from the heavens. And also the most practical consequence of our little venture thus far. Got no old shipwise for this one. Going to just call weird, weird. So we have artifacts, a temple, and this power. All connected. More questions than answers. Can we find more of them? Already picked one up from the scans. Matches another one of the artifacts we found. In theory, there might be one temple for each. But sifting through all the signs to identify a match is tricky. Impossible if we don't have the right artifact to compare. And even then, it takes time. You'd still need to cross-reference the artifacts we have with the data from the eye to pinpoint the source. Don't think it's just Fortune's laugh that this temple responded to you. The artifacts, the visions, this power you've gotten, all seems to be the same song somehow. Plenty to think about. Anyway, catch a smile out there. 
I'll work on finding planet anomalies that match the other artifacts we have. feeling after your experience at the temple you've given everyone at the lodge quite a scare that's distressing but to be expected i suppose according to what i've heard your body absorbed an almost unquantifiable amount of energy of a type we can't even begin to understand we're dealing with something unknown to modern science who knows how this encounter has affected your body or your mind Well, good. I'm pleased to hear that. That temple proves we're dealing with entities of unknown origin. The problem is that we can't even begin to guess what their intention was towards us and where they've gone. It's a possibility I've considered, but I'm not 100% convinced. The only thing we can be certain of is that the technology we've encountered points to beings that live outside the settled systems. Hmm. Perhaps. It's just that... Oh, I'm afraid that we're flying almost completely blind here. All we know for certain at this point is that whoever created the artifacts are the same beings that built the temple. Anything else is just guesswork. I might as well put on a blindfold and toss darts at theories written on the wall. As far as constellations concerned, you're the first human we're aware of that's ever encountered one of these places. Now, whether you consider that lucky or not, that's another matter entirely. Oh, believe me, this is positively exhilarating. Think about the significance of this research. The questions it raises alone are mind-boggling. Who was this wondrous structure built to accommodate? How long ago did these entities inhabit our universe? Are they still out there, somewhere? Perhaps. We'll need more data to be sure. It's funny. I used to think the artifacts were the end-all be-all of scientific discovery, the pinnacle mystery of our time. Never in my wildest dreams did I imagine it would lead to something of this magnitude. I just hope that you'll come through this, whatever it is, unharmed. Oh, <laughs> well, thank you. Look, I've already taken up too much of your time. All I can do is promise that I'm not going to make you deal with this mystery alone. 
Whatever might be happening, I'll be right here to help you every step of the way. Gear looks green. Ready to land. Alright, we're here. You ready? Because once we get started, I'm gonna be riding your tail till this is over. She stays with the ship, usually. Got a few more years to go before I let her swill whiskey in some backwater bar. There's uh, something you should know up front. I'm a co. As in Solomon Co, first man on Aquila. That tale I mentioned before, the one I think is connected to an artifact, it's something of a family legend. After Planetfall, Solomon spent years mapping Aquila, and he found a tiny little patch of nothing on his sensors. The kind of nothing an artifact produces. He called it the Empty Nest. Said it was a place even the wildlife of Aquila wouldn't go. Yeah, and the Coers have been coasting on that for ten generations now. Solomon's always a larger-than-life figure if you read the histories, but if you just listen to a few recordings of the man, he was simple. Just wanted to keep moving forward. Because you'll find a whole lot of nothing. Gravitational anomalies are a little hard to pick up in an area with tons of starship traffic. Not to mention all the electronics from the city, and security scramblers that the Free Star or smugglers out on the frontier put down. Solomon's maps are locked up tight in the local Gale Bank. We'll be heading there. It's still under manufacturer's warranty. Yes. Can I get an invoice? <laughs> what you need one of those for? Corporate policy. Is it okay if I just write it on a notepad? As long as it's written and signed, it could be on a loaf of bread. By order of Marshal Daniel Blake, I need to inform you, we've got some trouble at Gal Bank. Folks might be in danger, so you may want to steer clear. Never a dull moment around here. I know you. You're Sam Coe. Marshal will be damn glad to have another Free Star Ranger helping out. Afraid your information is a couple years out of date. It's just behind me on the right. The place is on lockdown, so you should steer clear unless you can help out. I guess that'd be the Marshal's call. Frankly, it ain't going well. Looks to be a stalemate. Maybe a little outside help will do some good. You need to stand back now. It's a hostage situation. Now please, get back, or I'll have the guards drag you away. I don't mean to be rude, but I don't know you. Now please, stand back. Aquila City at its finest, I see. Never a dull moment. Well, I'll be damned. Sam Cole. Been a long time. I won't hold my breath about you being here to take the badge again. Uh, listen, Sam, just so you know, I don't blame you for how it went down. For the others, though, you might get a different reception. Thanks. I appreciate you saying so. But I figure some of that reception is owed. Still, I appreciate the sentiment, Marshal. It seems you got a situation. My friend here may be the answer you're looking for. All right, Sam. I'll trust your judgment on this one. Some folks from the Shaw Gang tried to rob the place, but they got spotted by a guard. They took everyone inside hostage, and now they're keeping a watch so we can't move against them. They're using the intercom to communicate. It's a big group, a 
that hides outside the city and runs smuggling jobs off-world. They take in all kinds, rookies and veterans alike. Judging by their lack of preparation, I'd say this particular group is green as hell. Probably their first attempt at heist. That should work in our favor. Right about now, they're probably wishing they've just stayed home. They won't talk to me. Say they don't trust the badge. <laughs> they want a neutral negotiator. In other words, they didn't have a plan for this, so they're stalling while they come up with one. Without demands, I ain't got much to work with. About all we can do is wait and see. Hmm. All right, I'm willing to allow that. But a few things first. Say what you have to, but whatever they ask for, there's no way in hell I'm giving it to them. Also, there are lives at stake, so don't get cavalier. Find out what they want, and then report back to me. Take it slow and steady. Look for every opportunity to de-escalate. You got this. Hey, you in the bank. I'm sending in a negotiator, so don't shoot. You're the negotiator, huh? If you think you're just gonna walk up here and get us to surrender, you're dead wrong. just the marshal's tool. You want what we want. A nice, happy ending where nobody gets hurt. So let's talk. They talk too damn much. Complain about everything. As much as we'd like to, none of us has shot one yet. We want to guarantee a safe passage to the spaceport and a ship. Drop the hostages off somewhere safe in the system. After that, we'll radio back where they are, and the Marshal and his crew can come and get them. But if anybody follows us when we break orbit, we start shooting people. Got it? What, do you think we want to stay locked up in here? Hell no! Oh, hell, the Free Star Rangers have got ships. They can give us one of them. This whole damn job's gone wrong. It was supposed to be just a quick hit. Clean and simple, you know? So let's just... Let's all try to keep our heads, yeah? Because my guys, they're going crazy in here. I don't know how much longer we can last. What do you mean? Judge won't come down too hard on us. Yeah. I 
think this has gone on long enough. You go tell the marshal we'll come quietly. You'd make a decent ranger with the way you handled that. What's the word? Well, I'll be a son of an Ashta. <laughs> How'd you pull that off? Considering those are Shaw's people, that's damn near a miracle. Here, you've more than earned this. You got us out of a tough spot, and you did it with courage that's not common. As a matter of fact, you might just be Freestar Ranger material. If you're interested, head on over to The Rock and ask for Emma Wilcox. She handles the new recruits. excitement for now. Oh, I suppose I'll have to write a report about all of this. Nice job. Ah, so damn tired. All right. The family has a few different deposit boxes secured in here, so let's look around. Here's a copy of the key. Okay, now remember, Solomon was from an earlier generation, so it's not gonna be on a slate. Big bundles of paper is what we're after. Oh, no. Jacob. Of course that old mule saw this coming. He's just a bitter old man. Interfering in what's none of his business. There we do. I was hoping to avoid the estate when we landed. Cora's gonna be so mad. Because I told her we wouldn't have time to check in with her. Look, I was trying not to do this, okay? We really gotta do this. I know, it's just... It's personal. Yeah, I know. Alright, fine. He's my dad, okay? We're not exactly on friendly terms. He probably figured I'd come for the maps at some point. Got ahead of me. Family business just wasn't something I wanted to get into, you know? Yeah, well, sorry I'm such a pain about it. No forgiveness between me and my old man. It's, uh, co-tradition. All right, shall we? Well, well. Sam Co finally decides to darken our doorstep again. You know why I'm here. Oh? What's that? You come to your senses? Realize where you ought to be for once? I ain't asking again. You ain't asked once. Let's hear it. I want you to say the words about what's more important to you than family. Okay, this was a mistake. The only mistake I'm seeing here is you. Bringing your constellation lackey here instead of my granddaughter. Come to help Sam loot his ancestry? You're not getting those maps. Full stop. I got just as much right to those maps as anyone else in this family. That's exactly right, Sam. We all share Solomon's legacy. Only some of us are around to live up to it, and some of us aren't. All right, that's enough. Come on, let's you and I talk. In private. Hmm. Welcome home, Sam. Make your visit short, okay? It's what you do. Give me a sec. <sighs> All right, let's talk options. No, I don't. It's just... It's been a while, but this is how it goes, every time. No, no, no. I mean, this is no place for her, okay? The less time she spends with Jacob, the better. Damn it. Fine, fine, fine. We'll, we'll go get her. I just, if there's any other options, I'd appreciate doing those first. 
Sam's Constellation Lackey here to bother me again? You mean besides the fact that you're some independent group that doesn't know where your loyalties lie? Or are you referring to the fact that my granddaughter lives in your clubhouse rather than in her family home? Well, that's not your decision, is it? It's co-property by birthright. It stays here. Well, it's not your place to butt in. Can't disagree that Solomon was an explorer. I'll admit. Can't believe I'm saying this. But if I'll get you out of my hair, then fine. You can have the maps. They're in the other room here. Key. All right. Let's see if we can find the empty nest. All right, let me think. The way I heard it, the readings he was getting were normal at first, then they bottomed out. And no creature, alien or otherwise, would dare step inside. There. Found it. Oh, boy. <sighs> That's a problem. First, it's in the middle of the frontier, which we already expected. No problems there, but the usual tussling with alien wildlife. But the Empty Nest is a cave right in the middle of Shagang territory. Same outlaws who held up Galbag. Criminal groups in Aquila always find a way. But they usually have to keep on the move to avoid the Ashton. Well, it could just be a coincidence that the cave we want happens to be where the Shaw Gang runs around. But something doesn't feel right. Well, just remember, it's about the artifact, not them. Hurting bad guys puts a smile on your face, that's a bonus. Let's get to that cave. Just feel those Gs. Good times. Stop for a beat when you passed out. I'm glad you're still with us. Guess we're done. I think that's far enough. Hate to put a hole in the head of Aquila's own prodigal son. At least not before we've had a word. You must be Shaw. What I am is disappointed. Samco in the flesh, and he's peddling around the frontier with the has-beens of Constellation. Now you got past my crew, who I pay quite handsomely, I might add. Grabbed something from that weird cave. Probably whatever's been keeping the Ashta away. So, I'm down one hideout. Now, let's talk about what all that's worth to me. Your lives, your credits. One or the other, really. Oh, really? Let's hear it. You got past a few rookies, that's all. 
Huh. The Shaw Gang's name in print outside a wanted poster does sound nice. <laughs> so what? By morning tomorrow, we're gone anyway. Sick of trading words with you. Kill them! or signal coming from it. That doesn't mean much. This thing could be emitting something we can't even detect. As far as we know, we could be building a gigantic bomb that will blow up as soon as we finish it. Or maybe it's some kind of interstellar children's toy. Why would either of those things give the Discoverer visions and music? It's a message. I'm sure of it. We just have to hope that finding more of the pieces will give us some clue. I hear that. Moving forward sometimes means fumbling around in the dark. I think Cora and I can use some downtime, but you let me know if you ever want to team up again. Oh, and since it tends to come up, me and my Rugrat co-pilot work as a team. That's non-negotiable. If I'm coming with, that means Cora's on your ship. Likewise, you know where to find us. I must admit, you've surprised me. I thought you were going to take off as soon as you'd gotten something from us. But I was wrong. I want you for a little soiree I'm planning. A business meeting, of a sort at least. It's about an artifact. And our goal is simple, we're going to purchase it. Our seller is a freelance operative in the city of Neon, which means the artifact is almost certainly stolen from someone. I just need a little more presence in the negotiation to show we're serious. And I think you'd be perfect. Oh, exceedingly. The free market there is in full effect. Anything goes as long as you have the money. We'll be taking advantage of that. That settles it, then. We just need to make a few stops when we get to the city, and then the drinks will be on me. Drinks are on you? Hmm. Now I'm certain there's something wrong with you, Walter. It'll be easy, I promise. I'll ride passenger on your ship until we get to Neon. Just let me know when you're ready to set off. To the Volai star system, then. I admit I'm a little excited. Smell that? 
construction, incense, industrial chemicals of every kind. But they still can't get rid of the odor of chasm bass. A native species of fish. I often wonder what would have happened if they'd never found out about the psychotropic effects. I mean, on paper, a rich protein source is far more practical value than a recreational drug. But theory loses out once again to practice. Something to do with Chasm Bass's natural oils, apparently. If you're curious, the name is Aurora. We need to stop by the Stroud Ekram offices. There are certain authorization procedures when large funds are being transferred, even for something like this. What's this about? Cut the act. The snippers picked up the Aurora you're carrying the second you stepped through. All right. Get up slowly and turn around. Try to run, and we open fire. So, what was the plan, Bashan? Smuggle the Aurora into Kiel City or New Atlantis? No, no, I just forgot I was carrying it, is all. Honest mistake, right? Medical do for you. Obvious? Yeah, haven't zoned in like a week. My whole body feels like it's crumbling. You know, All right. Tell me what happened to you. Is it an aurora overdose? Something else, perhaps? No one cares if you're addicted to the stuff. Hell. Oh, you're certainly welcome to take a look, but I'm afraid we're dangerously low on supplies. I'm sick of feeling this way when I can't get a fix. I can assure you it isn't by choice. You see, I'm a bit... at odds with the current administrator of Neon. His drug is turning the streets into a graveyard and he doesn't seem to care. We've argued about it on more than one occasion, and all he's done is try to persuade me to quit. Thinning out my supply chain is his newest tactic. then you understand what I'm up against. At this point, I've resorted to asking anyone that has a ship registered outside of the Voli system to bring me medical supplies. I pay them for the supplies, of course, but it's the only way I can sneak them past Bayou's people at the spaceport. Now, if there's anything else I can do for you, anything at all, you just let me know. I'm sure we can get you fixed up with something. If Benjamin Bayou's ego was as combustible as helium-3, he'd be able to provide enough fuel to power every ship in the settled systems. Stroud Eklund makes some of the finest ships in the settled systems. I'd love to get a look at their operations. Mr. Stroud, he didn't know you were coming in. It's all right. I just need to have a short chat with my counterpart. Is she in today? Yes. Uh, allow me to bust you in, sir. Issa! Shall we continue from last time? The luxury cruise line market is completely outside of our core competencies. Investing into it is a mistake. No, I'm here about... Wait a minute, a mistake. Our ship designers are the best in the settled systems. They design personal craft and military ships, Walter. Large-scale accommodations and hospitality is a completely different beast. Oh, I'm so sorry. Here I am, arguing with my partner, <laughs> and you're just standing right here. Issa Eklund, the hyphenated Eklund in our glorious company's branding. Co-CEO, heir to the Eklund fortune, and somewhere down there I'm his wife, yes. Didn't know our marriage was such a low priority. It jumps up the list at the right moments. Oh, aren't you lovely? Walter, wherever did you meet your new friend? I'm jealous. A colleague from Constellation. Ah, 
Ah, yes, the daring explorers my partner is so infatuated with. <laughs> you should hear him reciting that speech. <clears throat> There's no need to go into that. <laughs> oh, my heart skips a beat when he does it. Really, it does. Such passion. If he talked to the board that way, I wouldn't need to placate them so much. Who was it again, Walter? The founder of Constellation? Sebastian Banks. His final address before he disappeared. Second it. Believe me, I've heard it plenty of times from him already. I am not going to be forced into embarrassment in my own office. The answer is no. Talk to him about it later. Once he cools down, he'll be all ears. Yes? Why are you here, Walter? The board meeting isn't for a while. Our vacations aren't coming up either. It's the discretionary fund, Issa. I need all of it. Ugh. Oh. This wouldn't have anything to do with that meeting you've set up at the Astro Lounge, would it? I never said that. Did you have an agent hack into my files again? Only after you had one hack into mine. Tell me, can mutual distrust lead to a point where it's actually the same as mutual trust? A remarkably insecure location for a clandestine meeting. That was the point. Neutral territory in the open. With no leverage. Oh, you must let me help. It's been too long. I have this all taken care of. Some investigation into the cellar. What's motivating them? Then, some preliminary casing of the Astral Lounge for security flaws. Give you the advantage if things go wrong. Bribe a few bouncers, alter the codes on the doors. Yes, exactly. I hate being selfish, but I would like some time with my husband. We need to go through the fund authorizations anyway. James Newell is the broker who knows our seller. He'll be able to help you find out more about them. And it shouldn't be hard to find the Astral Lounge. Here. Let me at least give you some operation funds since I won't be joining you. Meet me back here. Yeah, I'm going to be present for the negotiation. I'm not leaving you to the Neon Sharks, I promise. Aren't you? Name's Boone Morgan, your new best friend on Neon. If you're here for a drink or listen to the music, I've got you covered. But if you're here for something a little more exciting, we have plenty of Aurora for sale. Not at the Astral Lounge, my friend. In fact, this is the only place authorized to sell Aurora by order of Administrator Bayou himself. And once you buy it, you can use it anywhere in the Neon that you'd like. Except the spaceport, of course. Oh, no, 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 no. Drugs are for street gangs and junkies. Aurora is on an entirely different level. I like to call it an exquisitely crafted transcendent experience. <laughs> Only problem is that won't fit on the package. Here. We'll take a look at the menu. Now, I'm not going to lie, the Aurora is a bit expensive, but <laughs> let's face it, can you really put a price on pleasure? Oh, Ben and I are good friends. <laughs> he personally gave me the job here at the Astral Lounge. Oh, he's a good man. Cares a lot about the citizens of Neon, making sure they're all employed and well taken care of. A real humanitarian. 
The Astro Lounge is one of the safest places in all of Neon. Security is hand-picked from the finest officers in the city. Private meetings are usually held in the floor above. Just use the elevators. Then I would say you'd be interested in the Astro Lounge VIP package. For a reasonable fee, our security can be your security. We do strive for setting the most reasonable rate. Huh. You work for Stroud Eklund? Well, perhaps something could be arranged. Yeah, I hope so. I'm afraid Neon Security needs to be paid too. We all have bills to cover. I'm afraid we can't budge on the price. The VIP package isn't for everyone. Excellent. We do hope your meeting goes to your satisfaction. Excellent choice. The Sky Suite offers luxury and sophistication you won't find anywhere else in these settled systems. And since you'll be living in the same tower as the Astral Lounge, all of its pleasures and pageantry are only an elevator away. Well, of course, the Sky Suite features an open design with an emphasis on luxury. Whether you prefer the morning sky or a neon sunrise, the high ceilings and wall-sized windows will give you a full view of the city's splendor. How unfortunate, but I will be here should you change your mind. Pretty amazing, isn't it? That's Borealis, only 19 years old, and yet she produces some of the most heart-pounding, trippiest electronic music you've ever heard. I don't know where she gets her inspiration, but I'm betting all that free Aurora she gets has something to do with it. That depends on if you're hungry or thirsty. All right, well, I've got a couple of specialties of the house you might be interested in. First, there's our best seller, Sangria Astral, which is a curiously refreshing, fruit-infused red wine served in a commemorative bottle. But if your palate is a bit more refined, we have our Bayou Private Reserve, a painstakingly distilled cognac stored in the purest Arcturan crystal. That enough? Or are you hungry as well? Hope you're enjoying the music in the lounge. Sorry, I don't do autographs. Yeah? Okay? Cool. Cool. Most people that come up to me just want an autograph for a picture. And after I've been modding all night, it gets really annoying. Programming the beats? Turning the dials? Come on, stay with me here. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. I'm just pretty bummed out right now. My music slate's gone. Completely vanished. I had all of my new songs figured out on that thing, and someone ripped me off. Total drag. Oh man. Wow. That'd be so cool. Yeah, please. I thought I sensed a decent aura around you, when you walked up. Songs. Lyrics. Poems. All of my thoughts, basically. We're talking three years of stuff. It's not like I can just rewrite everything. Some of those moments of inspiration are long gone, out of my mind. That's why I write them down. 
Exactly. So, anything you can do to help is appreciated. Oh, and if you're looking for a lead, talk to Micah. She works the bar at Euphorica, and she's a walking grapevine. Anyway, I got to figure out how I'm going to mod my next set. I'll see you around, okay? Never could bother with that other place. You're welcome. We have everything you want. Welcome to Newell's. If you're looking for any specific goods, Rosa and I guarantee we'll beat Sieghart's lousy selection every time. Rosa Newell is my wife. We own this place together. Sieghart's Outfitters? Oh, come on. You don't have to pretend you haven't been to his poor excuse for a store off of Bayou Plaza. Oh, I don't have a problem with his place. My problem is Siegert himself. That man has absolutely no respect for the business community on Neon. He skips merchant meetings and refuses to participate in any of our group buys. Worst of all, he pays off Neon security to keep his place safe. By standing up to the lowlifes who come in here expecting me to just hand over all of my money. I refuse to be run out of business or be forced to pay protection. Yeah, sure. If all you care about is yourself. Every payment Seagert makes validates Neon Security's corruption. He's setting a bad precedent that many merchants are forced to follow. Anyway, sorry. I know I can get a little intense about these things. If you'll forgive the outburst and have a look around, I'm sure you'll find something you might want to buy. Maybe I didn't. Information isn't usually free. I'd like to help you. I really would. Easy, friend. Not looking for trouble. Okay. I don't know much. But I did have one of my freelancers tail the seller back to his place. Sleep crate one. Let me write down the unit for you. You definitely know your way around a lock. How are the preparations coming? Good. Let's be on our way then. Goodbye, my dear. See you at the next board meeting? Oh, I'll be keeping an eye on this little operation. Just in case. Good luck, all of you. To the Astral Lounge. We're most well known for ship manufacture. No expense spared. If you want the best and can afford it, you choose Stroud Eklund. Unfortunately, our success means you'll sometimes see Stroud Eklund ship modules on less than reputable vessels. They covet them. The bastards. 
I've tried to convince the United Colonies we can help in that regard, but they're married to Deimos Star Yards, and those old salts are stuck in the glory days. It's exciting to see this little venture paying off, but we really do need to be careful. The artifacts were one thing, but this... well, we really need to keep this to ourselves. Can you imagine if word of this got out? If you thought it was a challenge to find artifacts, imagine doing it with everyone else in the settled systems vying for them as well. We need to figure out what this all means before someone else does. I guess we should be grateful we seem to be ahead of the pack, as it were. So far, no indications that anyone else has noticed what we're up to. Let's just hope that doesn't change with this newfound ability of yours. All right, we're here. Now, I don't know what the cellar looks like, but they'll have a security briefcase with them, larger than normal, big enough to hold the artifact. We should split up. The code phrase to identify yourself as the buyer is Ramsey and Travers. Are they? <laughs> code phrases? My goodness, Walter, I think you're taking this espionage business a little too seriously. Remember, Ramsey and Travers. We'll meet back near the elevator. What is it? Can't you see I'm busy drinking? It's worth exactly zero credits. Same as my career. So don't get any ideas. Oh really? I heard you all have a meeting in a few minutes, don't you? In one of those fancy VIP lounges? Speaking of which, I gotta get going myself. Excuse me. Now before we head in there, let me go over the ground rules. He'll ask for twice what we agreed on. That's normal. He'll probably try to walk out. That's normal, too. Don't worry about the amount we actually settle on. The Stroud Eklund Discretionary Fund is just a chip to you and me. Our goal is to get him to accept that chip in exchange for the artifact. Anything goes as long as it's in our hands, and we're not dead. How does that sound? That's why you're here. Hopefully our combined countenance will be enough, but grabbing the artifact and running is an option. Uh, just do me a favor and treat it as a last resort. I have a reputation. So you, Stroud, you look different in person. Our public relations always insists on doing some touch-ups for the official photos. Embarrassing, really. Your security here going to stand or sit for this little meeting, making me nervous. So polite, almost makes me forget what planet I'm on. Am I to assume that briefcase has our item of interest? Yeah, here it is. Well, look at that. One of a kind, and I know you want it. I have the amount we agreed on. Uh-uh. Things have changed. I want double. Now how am I supposed to do that? I don't know, but your security here seems to have some fancy gear. Why don't they chip in? Oh really? And how do you know that? Who talked? Does it matter? We know you're in a fix, and we're still willing to buy. For the agreed-upon amount. I got people after me, okay? I can't just settle on what we agreed on. I need more so I can disappear. That's not our problem. We came here expecting one amount. Now you want another. You telling me Walter Stroud ain't got the cash? 
I'll walk out of this booth right now. What the? Security! As you can see, we're in control. Take advantage of our generosity. Take the money. All right. Okay. It's all yours. Hope I never see any of you people ever again. We have it. This couldn't have gone better. Well, it's all. Some high-pressure tactics, but we got what we were after. Time to go home, shall we? Stop right there. You're in possession of Slayton Aerospace property. Ah. Slayton must have been the original owner. We don't need to do this. All's fair on Neon, am I right? Hand over Mr. Slayton's property. Now. Is there a problem here? Yes. This armed thug was trying to steal our belongings. I'm going to need you to back away from our VIPs. Now. Fine, but you can't stay in the Astral Lounge forever, Stroud. Nicholas Slayton's already got your number. Sending armed men into the Astral Lounge? Slayton must be serious about getting the artifact back. We'd better get off the planet quickly. Slayton wants you dead. I would hop on the first ship out of here you can find. Ace. Something's gone wrong, hasn't it? Slayton has put a bounty on your heads. He's greased a few palms. Your ship's been impounded at the spaceport. The same way everything works on Neon. Money. It's terrible at keeping secrets. The CEO of Slayton Aerospace. They're a systems manufacturer. Engines, thrusters... Agreed. Have a talk with the man himself. Slayton Aerospace has offices here in the Trade Tower. If Nicholas is moving this quickly, he must be there or close by. Let's head to their lobby, shall we? See if we can make an appointment. If you have a question, you can chat with the receptionist all you want. Welcome to Slayton Aerospace. Can I help you? Slayton Aerospace is the premier component supplier for a variety of Starship needs. But, if you were supposed to be here, you would know that already. I'm afraid Mr. Slayton is a very busy man. Hmm. Maybe I can see if he has just a moment. Maybe I could squeeze you in. Let me see. I'm glad you understand the position I'm in here. Oh, I think we can make an exception in your case. Mr. Slayton will see you. Just use the elevator. Hoping to get a meeting? I've been waiting all day. It's ridiculous. Wait. This clearly isn't the executive level. He's on to us. Walter. Uh, taking what's mine, then breaking into my office. A bold move. But one easily counted. Oh, we're trapped. Hello, Walter, dear, are you there? Issa? Took longer than I'd like, but I managed to pay off one of Slayton's security consultants. They've patched me in. All right. We've got her out. Once the door's open, just follow her instructions, okay? For the moment, Slayton will be scrambling his own security teams once he gets wind that we're no longer at his mercy. Our time is limited. I'm aware of the irony of me continuing to say it'll be easy. But it'll be easy. Doors will open in three, two, one. Slayton's guards and employees are all over. Be careful. Okay. You'll want to use the vent system to slip around unnoticed. There's a cover just to the right of the elevator you came in on. 
That's the elevator you came in on. Jump right across the top of it and keep going to the end. Stop. One of the doors leads you right into the open. I'm unlocking a safe route. Security is on full alert. Thanks for taking time to chat. I... I really need a friendly ear right about now. I received a message from Constellation, and it's given me a lot to think about. No, no, it's nothing like that. It's just a list of requests. Things I would normally handle if I was there. <sighs> but I'm not. I'm out here instead, with you. No, it's the first time. But the fact that they're reaching out, well... It's given me a lot to think about. Something like that? <laughs> it's difficult to explain. Before I joined Constellation, I served for eight years as the head of the Navigator Corps until the UC decided to axe the department. It was a branch of the United Colonies Navy, a small fleet of ships outfitted for galactic exploration. Basically, a military version of Constellation. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Some more than others. You see... The top brass demanded pressworthy discoveries to justify the spending, and money was tight after the war. Shutdown was inevitable. At the end of the day, I was in charge, so the blame obviously fell on my shoulders. Seriously? The colony war, of course. You know... That little incident that caused the death of thousands of decent men and women as they squabbled over border disputes? That war. Oh, like hell I can't. You once told me that you favored the journey over the destination. So I'm hoping you'll understand what I'm trying to say. I failed because I was more concerned about exploring the stars than pushing a pencil. If I had fought harder, I'm convinced our division may have had a chance to prove its value. That's just it, though. Did I push too hard? Did they shut us down because I wasn't quietly sitting at my desk approving meaningless memos? We'll never know. Yes, maybe. Call it whatever you want. My drive, my initiative, my optimism. <laughs> it's been my greatest strength and my worst nightmare. It elevates me to these positions of authority. But all I want to do is explore, not sit and make sure all the accounts are balanced. Yes, exactly. If it's obvious to you, imagine how obvious it is to someone like Barrett or Matteo. Oh, they must be itching to replace me by now. God damn it. Oh my god. I'm so sorry. Oh, here you are trying to help me and I'm yelling at you. <sighs> you have to understand. Once Aja retired, I lost the only person that gave a damn. Look, it's clear that you have feelings for me. It's just... I've never had time for this sort of thing in my life. Please, it's not you. It's me. 
I'm just not ready to get that close. I can't. Not now. But thank you for being there and listening. It helped. It really did. It's moments like this that really makes Neon the best place to do business. You steal what's mine. I trap you in the city. You infiltrate my office. I lock it down. Where else can you match wits for the highest stakes but here? <laughs> you have what's mine. I, indirectly, have what's yours. We are at a stalemate. Although I do count a few more guns on my side. Hmm. You do make a bold point, but that doesn't resolve our current dilemma. Perhaps I can help. We're both people of business, Nicholas. In the same industry, no less. Yes, I'm beginning to see the opportunity. There is, however, one final detail to disclose. Mr. Musgrove, my former employee, and the thief responsible for our serendipitous meeting was caught prior to your arrival. I think it would cement our new partnership if you were to decide on his sentence yourselves. If you wish, you will have the opportunity to tell him yourself, shortly. He's a thief, and you're going to let him go? That's preposterous. My security brought Musgrove to my office. I'm sure seeing you again will be a fine conclusion to your previous business. I have an opportunity to spare a man's life. I know he probably wouldn't do the same for us, but that shouldn't matter. Oh, no. You. Slayton really does have a sick sense of humor. Slayton took it all. Probably in one of his secure accounts somewhere. I'll settle up with him later. Arbitration, lawyers, all that nonsense. Ten years working in aerospace engineering, and they laid me off. You damn right I stole that thing. They tell you if you have talent and commitment, you can go far. But the truth is it's all about who steals the most and gets away with it. Please, I was just trying to sell a product, okay? Isn't that why we're all here? Be lenient. We were taking advantage of his initiative, after all, even if we have found ourselves working with the man he stole from. Justice for some, huh? Fine. Rather be caged than dead. A cage is too good for you, Musgrove. They should stick you on an asteroid somewhere and let you think about what you've done. I will make the arrangements for Neon Security to take him into custody. You're free to leave. Time to go. Let's talk more back at the ship. This was a good meeting. Very productive. A deal with a man who wanted us dead. And I 
guess we can call that a win. What do you think? After this? With enough Chandra Vineyard's Merlot in me, I just might. Oh god. I might need a few doses of Aurora to make it through that myself. All in all, a great success. Thank you for allowing me to tag along with Constellation's newest star. <laughs> yes, I used a pun. Forgive me. Just knowing what you are be dangerous. Our distance from you is the whole point. We interfere now because we must. I'm not liking what I'm seeing on the scans. The energy output from that ship is far above the normal range. If we spin up the grab drive now, we have a chance. How is Neon? Are you... are you okay? No? Okay. I'll start transferring the data over now. Is that... is that a prototype? No, that material isn't anything we... What the... Everyone, come take a look at this. That's no faction vessel or Crimson Fleet. Secret military tech, maybe? Hmm, no United Colonies Admiral approved that starship design. They call themselves the Star Corps. Demanded we hand over the artifact. Like we were children, playing with their parents' things. What do people know? Any offshoot groups go by that name? Not in any corner of the settled systems I've seen. Maybe a distant human colony, finally popping its head up? Huh. Another house for room? I very much doubt that. We ignoring the obvious here? A heretofore unknown group who just happens to know about the artifacts. I'm just gonna say it. Intelligent alien life, or extra-dimensional beings. The original creators from the furthest fringes of space. Or beyond even that. Is the metaphor of avenging angels coming down to keep humanity from forbidden knowledge not apt here? So, we have a lot of theories, but nothing concrete. Except that they're after the artifacts, and they're willing to take them by force. 
Just because we can't ID it, doesn't mean it's not one of ours. It's got shields, engines, all the usual settled systems tech. I don't mean to judge your grasp of material engineering, but I've never seen a starship built out of whatever that is. Although I bet if you put that ship hull in an artifact under the same lens, you'd get a match. Noel, start analyzing all the data from the ship sensors. The gravitational wave they caused, scans of their weapons, shields, everything. We're in the dark. We need to learn anything about them we can, including some way to fight them if necessary. Until then, we stay the course, collect the artifacts. It's even more important now that an intelligence we don't know or understand is looking for them. All we can do is be more cautious, but we are not stopping. This could end up being a race we don't want to lose. Vladimir, has the eye picked up anything new? Some glints of shine in the dark. Ready to hand them out as soon as you please. All right. Good luck, everyone. And be careful out there. Shoot! I am unarmed! Look, we can help each other. I can be useful. Just don't kill me. Livy, and I mean you, uh, no harm. This place was full of traps. Traps everywhere. I removed them. But this, this corridor is just too dangerous. See? Looks normal. One step inside, slam! You are trapped. And nobody's been standing after the doors reopened. No, sorry. If I tell you that, then I lose my leverage. They're ingenious. Took a, a lot of lives to tease them out. No one knew how to get through the corridor. But I figured it out. There are letters on the floor. It is a grid. Those letters must spell something. But there are so many words or small phrases. Five? Six? It's hard to find... Uh, volunteers. I really thought we had it with M. Mantis. Ah, oh, poor Fred. Why does he 
does everyone always say that? See? I've been helpful. You... you could let me go. Or better, I can help. I know these traps. I know how this mantis thinks. Please, let me help. And just give me a taste of the cachet inside. You can trust me. I like to think of myself as a merciful person, and I love giving people the benefit of the doubt. But I don't know about this one. Trust is maybe too strong a word. We need each other, so we use each other. Then, when the arrangement is no good, we decide then? I have sacrificed too much. No. I... I won't go. I will fight you! I wanted to talk to you, but honestly, I don't know where to begin. The Starborn's technology is simply astonishing. It's just almost too much to process. Of course not. No one has. If an encounter with this level of importance had occurred in the past, I assure you that Constellation would be well acquainted with it. Yes, I suppose I am. But you can hardly blame me, can you? You do understand the significance of this encounter, don't you? This is humankind's first contact with what I believe is an alien race. A race with technology that could be far superior to our own. Oh, we could learn so much from them. The way they behaved, I'd say that's not very likely. If we are to learn anything from the Starborn, we're going to have to take the initiative ourselves. I wouldn't say I was afraid. More like approaching the situation with caution. Can't be a coincidence that these Starborn suddenly appeared after your experience at that temple. We know they're here to lay claim to the artifacts, but what's their true motivation? What aren't they telling us? They're certainly hostile, but I don't think they're here to completely annihilate us, or they would have done so already. Damn. Oh, if only we knew more about the Starborn. What their species is like, where they're from, how they're able to speak our language. I feel like a cadet on my very first day aboard a spaceship. My mind is absolutely swimming with questions. Obviously. But there has to be more to these beings than simply originating from another world. Their name alone, Starborn. There's some type of hidden meaning there. Something that feels very old. Perhaps even ancient. Whatever the case may be, I can assure you that Constellation intends to get to the bottom of this mystery. Hmm, I'm not really sure. Scientifically speaking, we're all born from the stars. Most of the chemical components of our body, carbon, oxygen, sulfur, are exactly the same as those manufactured by internal stellar reactions. Now, ask someone like Matteo the same question, and he'd probably give a more theological answer. But hey, it's all a guessing game anyway. Exactly. We must use all of the tools at our disposal to learn more about the Starborn and their connection to the artifacts. 
Thank you. I really appreciate your support right now. You know, it's funny. When I was a little girl, I'd lay on the ground and stare up at the stars. I was absolutely convinced they held a secret. I'd remain there for hours in silence, eyes closed, listening, waiting for the secret to be whispered in my ear. This encounter with the Starborn is that moment to me. The stars are finally whispering, and I need to hear what they have to say. I knew I could count on your support. Well then, I've certainly wasted enough of your valuable time. Just do be careful if you cross paths with these Starborn in the future. I wouldn't want to lose one of the most valuable members of Constellation. I have an important personal decision to make, but I need to discuss something with you first. Phew, thank you. So, where to start? Um, before I was with the Navigator Corps, I was career military, part of the United Colonies Navy. When the colony war broke out, I was posted as the chief navigator on a warship the Dauntless. Well, the position didn't last long. There was a particularly bloody battle. We were fighting over a world in the Aeta Cassiopeia system. Worst fighting I'd ever seen. We lost twelve ships that day. Twelve. Including my own. Economic reasons. Several of the worlds in the Cassiopeia system were mineral rich. Both sides wanted to drop refinery outposts on the surface to bolster their supply. No. This is important. I need to tell you this. The ship was barely intact. The captain and first mate died the previous day, which put me in command. A shrewd captain would have called for the crew to abandon ship, but I was so angry. I wanted to stay. I needed to fight. The Dauntless was a tough little ship. No shields and the hull was breached, but it still had power. And weapons. That's why I remained in the battle. Huge mistake. <sighs> I believe you. But you haven't heard the worst of this. We fought for hours, but the damage was fatal. I gave the order to abandon ship and the crew piled into the escape shuttle. As the shuttle launched, I could see it was damaged. I... I heard screams before the radio cut. The last thing I saw, they were... spiraling helplessly towards the planet's surface. There was... There was nothing I could do. You're sorry. For me? If I hadn't been so stubborn, so eager to prove that I could handle command, my crew would have had more time to escape. Try telling that to their loved ones. When the dust settled, the United Colonies gave me a medal. Can you believe that? A damn medal! I never even had a chance to find the shuttle wreckage and give my crew a proper burial. 
After I checked every section of the ship for wounded crew, I took the other escape shuttle. If I hadn't, I would have died. The Dauntless came apart minutes after I escaped. Bad luck. That sounds familiar. Remember when you said no one but me would have pushed harder to keep the Navigator Corps going? Well, this time, pushing too hard cost lives. Don't you get it? Everything I do, everything I touch, somehow falls apart. That's why I'm worried about us. Look, it's clear the two of us are becoming more than partners. We're becoming close friends. Even though I've pushed people away in the past, I feel different when I'm around you. I feel safer, comfortable, not afraid to admit who I am. I'm terrified I'm going to screw that up. After everything you've heard, all my stories, you still have faith. No one's ever cared about me this much. Not even Aja. I'm counting on that. Look, I think I've said all I can handle for now. Thank you for being there. For listening to me when I needed it the most. I'll never forget this. I promise.
Ever since we talked about the Battle of Cassiopeia, I can't get what happened out of my mind. Was it that obvious? Oh, I thought I could handle these memories, but until I return to Cassiopeia, I'll never be able to put this to rest. The last time I saw my crew, their escape shuttle was headed for the planet's surface. I need to find the wreckage to ensure their memories are honored. I would like that. Actually, I need that. One problem, though. Pinpointing the crew's shuttle wreckage is going to be like trying to find a grain of salt in a sandbox. I think we need to start by locating my old campsite on Cassiopeia 1. Was there to tell? I survived. My crew didn't. Still... Oh, I'll never forget my finger hovering over that launch button. Would I launch safely or explode into a fireball? It turned out that my shuttle had just enough power to allow an emergency landing on the planet's surface. I wouldn't call what I did a soft landing, but thank you all the same. It has a breathable atmosphere, indigenous fauna, and maybe a few abandoned mining outposts. Otherwise, it's not populated. My shuttle should have the telemetry tracking data for the other shuttle aboard. It should give us an idea where... it went down. That's if scavengers haven't completely stripped my ship for parts. Hold on. I don't know the exact location of my survival campsite. For that, we are going to have to head to Mast and see if we can get the information from my old friend, Admiral Logan. Your instincts are right on target. Logan and I butted heads more than once during my time with the Navigator Corps. We've never seen eye to eye. Look. I hope this isn't asking too much. Last thing I want to do is drag you into some kind of personal crusade. That's why I'm desperate for your help. Truth is, I'm scared. When I set foot on Cassiopeia, I don't know if I'll be able to handle what I find. If I begin to fall apart, I need someone I can trust to hold me together. I know you will. You've always been there when I've needed your help. Why you continue to support me, uh, I'll never understand. You're absolutely right. They do. Oh, I've been so busy searching the stars for answers. I've overlooked what's been in front of me all this time. True friendship. Something I've denied myself for far too long. Traveling out here with you, I've discovered that friendships change by circumstance. I worked closely with Aja on long space voyages, so we became friendly. When she quit Constellation, the friendship ended. But I'm certain at this point, even if you and I were separated by a great distance, we'd never lose touch. Yes. Yes, you're absolutely right. Hey, um, anyway, I've taken up enough of your time. I know you have a lot to do. I really appreciate your offer to visit Cassiopeia. Hopefully, it'll bring me the closure that I've needed for far too long. Pressure holding.
we've come. It's all becoming so overwhelming. The starborn, the artifact visions, the music. Is it all worth it? Mateo, are you having a crisis of faith? You? What if the starborn are right? What if our hunt for the artifacts is a fool's errand, doomed to failure and catastrophe? You think we're doing the wrong thing? We just want answers. Isn't that why we all joined in the first place? The noble quest of discovery? Exactly. When the universe presents us with a threat, we can't afford to run away. We need to stay in the fight. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to shame either of you. Blame the workings of a worried mind. I just hope that this journey doesn't turn us into something that we wouldn't recognize from where we are now. Hate to interrupt, but I have a favor to ask. Lot of equipment on the eye has reached the span's end. If we're going to find more artifacts further out, we need work done. Got the nods and signs from Sarah and Walter for the materials, but I need hands. Well, hold the lines, March. Seems like you got business with the person with you already. Tip my ear when you're done? I've heard you've been making the settled system safer. It's not much, but take this. Sarah Morgan. It's been, what, almost ten years? I don't know. It's, uh, good to see you again, sir. You're not required to address me as sir. That protocol ended the moment you dropped your clusters on my desk, remember? Look, Admiral, I'm not here to open old wounds. Old wounds is an interesting turn of phrase, given our past. Listen to me, Commander. I'm not sure why you're here, but whatever it is, why don't you just get to it? I'm here because I need your help, Admiral. You need my help. That's interesting. The last time we spoke, you made it quite clear that you were turning your back on the Navy. That was a decade ago. Things change. People change. Admiral, please. I didn't come here to argue. I'm here to come to terms with my past. Your past is sitting in a closed file in the archives. That's where you left it when you walked out on the United Colonies. And what about you? Just who in the blazes are you anyway? Very well. Then, as a good friend, perhaps you could kindly explain to me why I shouldn't have the both of you escorted from the building. With all due respect, Admiral. This is ridiculous. If you have a problem with me, then there's no need to berate my colleague. I don't have a problem with you, Commander. I'm simply trying to determine why you deserve the Navy's help. That's quite a noble gesture. Is this true, Commander? It's about Cassiopeia, Admiral. I'm heading back there to find out what happened to the crew of the Dauntless, and hopefully, to bring their legacy home. That sounds like a dangerous operation. Are you certain it's worth the risk? I... I don't know. I understand. Mental scars left by war rarely heal quickly, if ever at all. I sympathize with your struggle, Commander. I want to put an end to the sleepless nights. The nightmares, waking up in cold sweat. It's... been... difficult, Admiral. I understand. And I believe I owe you an apology, Commander. Our last encounter has obviously distorted my impression of your character. What can I do to help? If you wouldn't mind allowing me to access the files regarding my rescue, I'd be most grateful, Admiral. That shouldn't be too difficult. I've sent all the relevant information to you, Slades. Was there anything else? No, Admiral. Thank you. You don't need to thank me, Commander. I just hope you find whatever it is you're looking for.
I can't believe I'm here. It feels like walking into a dream. Oh, it's been nearly 20 years, but it feels like a lifetime. Strangely, this place looks exactly the same as I remember it. But that isn't possible, right? Just like a dream. I'm okay. It's just so surreal. Phew. Okay, so let me get my bearings for a moment. Yes. Yes, this looks correct. Those rock formations nearby look familiar. My old campsite shouldn't be far. Knowing that is the only reason that I'm here. <sighs> Once we get to the campsite, we'll use that as a starting point to search for the cruise shuttle wreckage. <sighs> Let's go. All of the escape shuttles from the Dauntless carried a final memory dump from the ship's computers. I'm hoping to find some information inside the wreckage of my shuttle that we can access. After my rescue, the Brass evaluated my mission debriefing and determined the crew was dead. When I pressed them on it, they told me it was wartime and Command didn't have unlimited vessels and personnel available to scour the planet. Okay, back to it then. Well, this is it. This is the spot where I spent close to a year waiting for rescue. Not exactly Paradiso, is it? I'm surprised you've never heard of the place. It's a resort colony in the Parima system. You know, a place to get away and unwind? Maybe we should head out there after we're done. Goodness knows we'll both need a vacation. Yeah? Well, inside I'm a shattered wreck. So, joke's on both of us, I suppose. Look at this thing. It's been sitting here rusting. I think we need to grab an emergency power cell to get the ship's computer up and running. Sure, if we're lucky. When I was stranded, I set up a distress beacon powered by emergency power cells. The beacon was up there on the plateau. I guess it's time to start climbing. Setting up this beacon probably saved my life. Who knows how long I would have been stranded here. We've located where the other shuttle went down. I can't believe our plan worked. Well, we're not there yet, but damn, it does feel good. Hmm. The telemetry data puts the wreckage out of range to hike. We're going to have to head back to the ship and land on a different part of the planet. Let's get going.
Landing site locked. Take us in. I'd been on this planet under more pleasant circumstances. I might have had more time to appreciate the beauty it has to offer. Judging from this debris, the crew's shuttle sustained far more damage than my own. Oh, those poor souls. This is what's left of the crew's shuttle. But it looks like parts were scavenged and dragged somewhere else. Could there have been survivors? I'll shoot if I have to. Just turn around and, and leave. I know how to use this thing, and I will. Oh my god. Who are you? I'm nobody. Just go away. I'm not going to let anyone take my stuff again. No way. Both of you, just go! I don't know. You're kind of scaring me. Why should I listen to you? The crew? No one's been looking for that crew since before I was born. So tell me another lie. Go ahead. You were born here? Hold on. Oh my god. Your parents? Your mom and your dad, what were their names? Jenna and Elias. Why? Jenna and Elias. Private Jenna Marsh and Corporal Elias Oberst. You're their daughter. Listen to me. I knew your parents. They worked with me on the Dauntless. I'm Commander Sarah Morgan. You're Sarah Morgan? Mom and Dad's captain? My parents used to talk about you all the time. It's like a dream to finally meet you. Yeah? Well, you're too late. My parents are dead. My father died a long time ago. And my mother, she was killed by those, those monsters at the graveyard. It's just me here now, all by myself. Let me ask you a question. Oh, actually, I don't even know your name. Oh, yeah. My name's Sona. Sona? <laughs> what a lovely name. Sona, you mentioned a graveyard. Is that where the crew is, um, you know? Buried? Yeah. It's a bunch of stones with those necklaces, like the ones my mom and dad had, hanging on them. Thank you, Sona. I'm going to talk to my friend here a minute, okay? Okay, Sarah. What do you want from me? Bunch of jerks. They pretended to be nice, but they were really mean. They made all these promises. They said they'd take me with them if I helped them load all of my stuff onto their ship. When I went to get the last bit of stuff that I had hid, they already took off and flew away. I think I cried for a whole day. I don't know. There was one lady and two guys. The lady was the one pretending to be nice to me. They were wearing spacesuits and had all kinds of guns. One of them had a big scar on his face. They looked pretty scary. I think I heard one of them say they were from the fleet or something like that. Sounded weird to me. Yeah, sure. Grown-ups always say that they're sorry right after something bad happens. But it's just words. It never really helps. When I get older, 
If I ever see those jerks again, I'm going to make them give me all my stuff back. Mom had slates with learning stuff on them. She used them to teach me how to read and do science. Oh, and math, too. Ugh. I think we looked at that stuff every day. She called it school time. I miss that. I miss her, too. Sure, I guess it's okay. Mom told me Dad got hurt when their ship crashed on this planet. He was always lying down and sleeping a lot. But I don't know what made him so sick. I was really little when he died, so I don't remember a lot about him. Well, every day my mom would go up to the graveyard to visit Dad. Sometimes she'd let me go, sometimes I'd stay here. There was this one day where I couldn't go, and she never came back. I was really scared. I finally went up there and found her, but she was hurt really bad. I couldn't even bring her home. At least, at least I was able to hug her before she died. If you want. Mom was a doctor on her ship, so she taught me how to gather food and medicine from the plants. She also taught me how to shoot this gun, in case bad people or monsters tried to get me. Didn't help me save her, though. Phew. I don't even know where to begin. Am I? I feel like a nervous wreck. Oh, there's so much to process. But I don't have time to deal with it right now. If you want to help, then find that graveyard and bring me those necklaces Sona mentioned. I'm hoping they're my crew's gene tags. It's an identification tag worn by UC military personnel. It's encoded with the soldiers' medical information and a sample of their DNA. If we can bring them back to Jemison, it would be like bringing home the crew's bodies for a proper burial. Good. Just be careful. Sona's monsters are undoubtedly hostile life forms that have claimed the graveyard as their territory. dangerous to stay here all by yourself, darling. I don't care. This is my home. You can't make me leave. We can't leave her here. It's not safe. She has to come back with us to Jemison. Oh, I don't know what to do. Can you talk to her? I knew I could depend on you. Now all we have to do is convince this poor girl that she's better off leaving the planet with us. I just... I don't know if I have it in me to say the right things. I can hear you talking about me. And I don't care what either of you say. I'm not going anywhere. Look, I'm clearly out of my element here and not in the right state of mind. Could you just talk to her, please? Why won't Sarah listen to me? I've been alone for a long time, and even when bad people visit, I've been safe. That still doesn't mean I should leave the only home I ever had, does it? Mom and Dad told me there was a whole universe out there, with thousands of planets. They showed me the maps and the star charts. That does sound pretty cool, but well, it's also kind of scary. It would be hard to leave the only home I've ever known. Well, 
I've always dreamed of finding a place that's safe from the monsters. But uh, leaving mom and dad behind, it's really hard. Even though they're dead, I don't want to abandon them. Yeah, you're right. I never thought of it that way. I'm sorry I yelled at everybody. I know you and Sarah are just trying to help. I'm going to go get my stuff and then I'll board your ship. Don't worry, I'll stay out of the way until we get, well, wherever we're going. That poor girl. I hope we've made the right decision. Oh, I do hope that's true. We're ripping Sona from the only home she's ever known and casting her back into society. It's going to be difficult for her to adjust to the changes. Wherever she ends up, just promise me we'll check on her from time to time, please. That means a lot to me. Look, um, before we leave Cassiopeia behind, I wanted to say one more thing to you. Perhaps at the Overlook we passed on the way here? I promise it won't take long. Let's go. Look, before we head back to the ship, I wanted to tell you how much of an amazing gift this has been. You had to push me to come out here, and if I hadn't have listened to you, the universe would probably have never known about that little girl. And I intend to repay you for that, even if it takes the rest of my life. You know, this is the second time I've been on this world. And until this very moment, I never stopped to reflect at just how magnificent it was. Oh, look at this place. This is the reason I'm out here, exploring the stars. Worlds upon worlds just waiting to have their beauty discovered. Shedding this burden of my past has finally allowed me to open my eyes. Wider than they've ever been opened before. And it's all because of you. Perhaps. I suppose we'll both have to think about that for a while now, won't we? Ah, <sighs> well. I suppose it's time to bid goodbye to Cassiopeia once again. This time, under much happier circumstances. Now, let's head back to Jemison. I want to give those gene tags you gathered to Admiral Logan, and figure out what we're going to do with Sona. strongest out there, now and always. There is no alternative. Welcome back. Did you find your answers? Not only that, but we found someone there, alive. A child born from two of the crew that survived the crash. After her parents died, that poor girl spent years surviving on that hostile world Alone. We abandoned her, Admiral. We let her down. I'm sorry. I had no idea. How could we have possibly known? Yes, of course. I think we can all agree that this was another unfortunate circumstance of the Colony War. What you'd call an unfortunate circumstance, I call a tragedy. You're absolutely right, Sarah. It is a tragedy. One thing that I can assure you is that the names of these men and women will never be forgotten. I'll see to it personally. Thank you, Admiral. Good luck to both of you. It's been an honor. Once we're done here, we should have a little talk with Sona. Poor thing's waiting for us at the lodge. There you are. I was wondering when you'd come and say hi to me. Hello, Sona. 
I see you found your way to the lodge without any trouble. Yeah, it was kind of hard though. All these people around. Never seen so many people in my entire life. <laughs> they sure won't. They have to catch me first. It's true. You're one of the toughest people I've ever met. So, what do you think? Do you like it here, Sona? At the lodge? Yeah, this place is huge. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. You must be like a bazillionaire, Sarah. <laughs> oh, don't I wish. This place isn't mine alone. It belongs to everyone who's a part of Constellation. And I think it should belong to you too, Sona. I want you to stay here and make this your home. Whoa. Does that mean I get to go exploring with both of you? Or wait, do I get my own ship? Exactly. And this is the perfect place to begin your education. I understand. Oh, and don't worry, I learn real fast, so you better get ready to have another member of Constellation signing on for missions. I can't wait. Well, anyway, thanks for letting me stay here. I promise I won't let either of you down. I'm sure that you won't. Well, I think we should let Sona get settled. If you wouldn't mind, I'd like to visit the Colony War Memorial now. I want to, uh, to pay my final respects. Well, if you hear something to the noises of the Nathan's world, that's me getting me to Look at this. All these people, their entire lives distilled down to names on a memorial. I wonder how close I came to being reduced to just a name. I am proud. I was simply too foolish to realize it, until you changed my perspective. And I care about you too. There's obviously some kind of a connection between us that I think we need to discuss. Just let me have another moment here, and then we can head over to the waterfall, so we can talk in private. I'm ready. Let's go. When things at the lodge are too much, I love coming to this spot to just sort of, I don't know, melt away for a while. It's lovely here, isn't it? <laughs> I've been from one end of the settled systems to the other, but this place, this exact spot, there's nowhere else like it in the galaxy. I knew you'd appreciate it. I usually come up here to mull over some of the heated debates we have at Constellation. You'd be surprised how many decisions I've made on this very spot. That's actually why I asked you to meet me up here. <clears throat> I was hoping we could talk about something very important. Good, because I have a lot to say. It's about my return to Cassiopeia. What we learned about Sona has been constantly replaying in my mind. Oh, maybe it sounds crazy. But that young girl's isolation feels like a reflection of my own life. Maybe. But for how long? I've spent my life surrounded by all sorts of people. Constellation, the Navigator Corps, <laughs> hell, even the UC military. Despite that, no matter how hard I've tried to make them a part of my life, they tend to drift away and disappear. 
Are you sure? For all we know, it's in my nature to keep people at arm's length. Or worse, push them away. Right now? Are you talking about Constellation? Or what exactly are you saying? Ha! Huh. <sighs> Sorry, I am... Um, I... I just need a moment to gather my thoughts. I know you want to have a serious relationship. You want to become close. So... If you're willing to take that leap of faith with someone like me, then I'm ready to do the same. You're something truly special. You know that? You've helped me conquer my self-doubt, my confidence, hell, everything. For the first time in my life, I feel complete. <laughs> and with you by my side, I'm convinced that feeling will last forever. You're the best thing that's happened to me in my life. I love you. Always. I received a message from my mother a few days ago. She's returned from another one of her sightseeing cruises. Yeah. You know, one of those luxury liner journeys that shows off binary stars, gas nebulas, asteroid fields. <laughs> Pretty photogenic stuff. Apparently, it's my mother's new favorite pastime. Oh, of course. I'm sorry. We never discussed this, did we? The thing is, my mother and I don't talk very much. We're not estranged or anything of the sort, we're just far apart. Sure, when you're younger. But as soon as you get older and they begin controlling your life, that's when you need to strike out on your own. Oh, I'm certain they felt they were doing the right thing. You see, both of my parents were diplomats working under the flag of the UC Administrative Division. After I completed my basic education, they signed me up for a one-year apprenticeship in their department, without bothering to ask. Hmm, wanted isn't the right word. Demanded would be more appropriate. For my apprenticeship, I was sent to Sidonia. My job consisted of drafting political policies and arbitrating trade disputes. The silver lining of the job was that it allowed me to spend time exploring every square inch of Mars. I was swallowed by it. Months before the apprenticeship ended, I dumped my diplomatic certification and joined the UC Navy. Of course, my parents didn't approve. We had a huge argument that resulted in all ties being severed between us. Well, that wasn't the worst of it. You see, my father was killed during the opening shots of the Colony War. I returned to Jemison for the funeral, and reunited with my mother. After that, we vowed to stay in touch. No, oh, aren't you sweet? Always concerned with how I'm feeling. That's why I fell in love with you. Your smile, your caring. <laughs> it brightens even my darkest days. Listen, I'm going to be completely upfront with you. All this talk of family, it makes me wonder where our own relationship stands. <laughs> you mean that? You'd do that? For me? I've been dreaming about this moment and still... 
I don't know what to say. <laughs> yes, yes, of course, yes. Ah, I just need a little time to think about the ceremony. I have some thoughts about how we should move forward. You know, I used to dream about finding the love of my life. And here you are. All I ever needed was you, right here beside me. Gave up my room in the lodge so Andreja had a place to call her own. Everyone needs space to let their thoughts run solo. Hate to interrupt, but I have a favor to ask. Lot of equipment on the eye has reached the span's end. If we're going to find more artifacts further out, we need work done. Got the nods and signs from Sarah and Walter for the materials, but I need hands. Won't be going alone. Need more than just the you and I. Ask around. A few constellations are already on their way up. Just grab a wrench. Should be quick. Hmm? Oh, sorry. I was just doing some math in my head. Trade the gaps with you. You call her the wrong wires. Station showing red. Nastier than I measured. Figured a few of the parts might be iffy. But this is going to take more than a span. Oh, I should have checked the compatibility when we made the order. I can stay with you until we get all this fixed. No need for the martyr's clothes, but I'm happy to have the help. As for you, while we're giving the eye the swords, need to tip your ear on another matter when you got the time. Don't want to worry, but we got more competition. Not Starborn, rival collector. Captain Petrov owns a salvager vessel called the Scow. Runs it like a palace of novelties, and he's got a new prize in his collection. Reached out through my hand to hands to see if we can do an honest swap. He says the rock ain't for sale for any price. Think we're gonna need a crowbar and bag for this one. He's got a reputation for seeing the gold in things, but he's no lab coat. Thinking he knows it's unique, but not why. All the more reason to clutch tightly. Left the life of a jack of ones behind myself. I know what I'm asking. But I see a clutch prize not up for the prying any other way. Not sending you lone hook on the job. I want Sam with you on this one. You two will be foot to foot the whole way, so make sure you're ready.
Who let you on board? Thought Petrov was done hiring mosquitoes. Or maybe you're after something from the captain's collection. Yeah? What kind of salvage work you do? Ship? Ground battlefield? Or do you just sculpt the back alleys picking through trash? Ugh, I hate running through a dead ship. Like sifting through a damn tomb. I always think the next ghost ship is gonna be like one of those horror films. <laughs> You're all right, scavenger. Go on ahead. Petrov's got a whole little alien zoo in the back. He's asking for trouble with those things. But the locks on the cages are pretty high-end. Thankfully. Petrov's got a whole little alien zoo in the back. He's asking for trouble with those things. But the locks on the cages are pretty high-end. Thankfully. Strewn about all over. The good stuff's locked up in a vault for Petrov's own personal viewing pleasure. And before you ask, Petrov's the only one with the keys, so don't try bribing any of the crew. You just waste your money. Trade it for it. Some dusty hauling ore from the fringe. <laughs> Was glad when he left. It's all shakes and muttering. Firefight breaks out, everyone on board is gonna join in just for fun. You understand? Welcome to Petrov's Palace of Peculiarities, the pinnacle of perfect procurement, the penultimate panopticon of prosperity. Ha ha ha! Don't have time for you. Get lost. Don't know why Petrov pays for all this junk, but at least he pays. A lot of the guards here are bounty hunters, smugglers, or salvagers from the fringes. Lots of shark smiles, you know? Pardon? Yes? Talk to Petro. His gloriousness will guide you. Ah! I wasn't aware we had the visitors. Wadik, you didn't tell me we had visitors. <sighs> we have visitors. Excellent. Now that you've gone to all this trouble to get here, you should make yourself at home. Relax. Kick up your feet on the tables. I don't care they have scorch marks on them anyway. Oh, 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 flattery, huh? My favorite pastime, huh? Between you and me, I do have something very special in the vault. Ah, but my jealous heart knows no bounds. I want to keep it all to myself. Tempting. I do love showing off. But my security team will have a heart attack. It would be against all those protocols that I admittedly told them to make. Easy there. Maybe we can work something out. I suppose it would be quite unfriendly to turn down a comrade in arms. Ah, very well. What's a quick look going to hurt, huh? I know. People look at me you and know, say, Petrov, your if whole it were ship up to is me, a testament of splendor. Why do you need a special vault? Well, all I can say is that even the greatest collection needs its own private viewing area. Plus, between you and me, there are thieves everywhere. So I spared no expense. Every door between me and my treasures is pain. But that is the price of security, huh? Eh? Que sera? Just a bit further. 
This ship and I have been through some adventures, I'll tell you. I once collected salvage from a demo celestial class while it was exploding. The crew was scraping scorch marks and bits of metal off the hull for weeks. But we were wedged perfectly between their two thrusters and were able to just kind of push them back into the star yard for repairs. Now, the moment itself. Ah, beautiful, isn't it? The man who sold me this told me that it spoke to him. That holding it for the first time was like drowning in your own soul. Alas, I've held it several times, and my soul is still breathing, devoid of any such enlightenment. Why, yes, he did. Oh, no. No, no, no. I can't. This one is mine. And it's only fair to warn you. Hands off! I would hate to sour our new friendship by becoming the victim of piracy. Hey, we're not pirates. Except, well, when we really need something, for really, really good reasons. Yeah, that does sound a little piratey, doesn't it? I'm afraid not. I'm easy in all things, except my collection. Then I suppose it's just a question whether my immeasurable love for my collection and my crew of hired cutthroats is enough to stop you. Go ahead. Make a move for the artifact. Let's see what happens. I don't see any moves we got left here. Wait! One I surrender! One I surrender! Don't kill me! We're only doing what we have to. Done! Stand down, everyone. Let the nice pirate pass. Any day now, you make now. It through is a no need for life. further violence. We're all friends here. Temporarily. Take what you want. What's mine is yours. The eye's gone completely dark. I, I can't reach anyone on the station. Noel, Starborn, came out of nowhere. Vladimir, get out of there! He already left, said he was going to, uh, to the launch. Are you? What did you do to our friends? They call me the Hunter. And now that I'm here, your part in glimpsing the unity is over. I'm already on my way. Say goodbye to your friends. It won't be long. Forget about us! That starborn bastard is after the artifacts! You can't let him take them! Pack up the collection, move it somewhere they can't- 
can't find it! He's right. We need to bunker down here and get those artifacts ready to move. Might need every gun to hold that Starborn off. What about everyone on the eye? We can't leave them to die up there. Can't blame you, but... Sure could use your help when that Starborn comes knocking. I don't know how long it's gonna take to pack up the artifacts. I... I'll get started. Hopefully this will only take a few minutes, if my hands can stop shaking! You leaving? Gonna barricade the door once you're out. Won't be able to let you back in. You too. Oh, thank heavens. You're all right. No time to waste. Let's get going. You're... alive. Krieg's ghost can keep waiting. Not many sights to see before I lost the lights. No tears for the old. Got the others to worry about. He... he came... out of nowhere. Thank you. Uh, I don't think I can move right away. But I'll make it. Go on. Okay. I admit... My famous personality wasn't so much help with this one. I'll be fine. I just uh, need to lie down for a bit longer. Sam. Sam, can you hear me? It's Sarah. There's nothing you can do now. He's not going to make it. Sam. Cora will be fine, okay, Sam? We won't let anything happen to her. Seriously damaged instead of critically damaged. Fortunate that you are likewise relatively undamaged is also preferable to the alternative. Took you long enough. I didn't see much. I didn't see anything, really. That hunter attacked me, I'm sure of that. I heard the others fighting him. Noel screaming and running off with the artifacts. Noel, she might still be in danger. There's a secret door in the basement, leads right to the well district. That would have been the safest route for her to run. It went <clears throat> quickly after you left. 
Walter was upstairs when he screamed. I went to check on them, and then the hunter appeared out of nowhere. We fought him off as best we could while Noel packed up the artifacts and escaped. I hope so. We held him off while Noel escaped through the basement. There's a door that leads to the well district. Oh, thank God. Thank God, thank God, thank God. I still have the artifacts, but where do we take them? Oh, there you are. I wasn't expecting you to run to the eye. You! You're not getting the artifacts. Yes. Let's see if they can slip from my grasp this time, shall we? You're back. 
Thank the Blackest Sea that you and Noel are safe. And the artifacts? The lodge. So, we slip from the Starborn's grasp, but not before taking a stab straight in the heart. We... Uh, we need to talk locks and bolts. Lodge and the Eye are not secure. Years in the making to modify the station. Take time to fix the damage, but more is the worse if we abandon her and try to start over. Just means he's playing the waiting man's game. He'll be back once we've done all the work of collecting the other pieces. The hunter, he, um... He probably found us because we're somewhere obvious. High populated area, just like how the Starborn found you orbiting Neon the first time. But the fact that they're competing with us to find the artifacts means they can't get them without searching. So we put the artifacts somewhere in the fridge, or on something that can slip from their grasp if they do another strike from the curtain. Fine idea. Starborn show up, you can burn helium in one spin of the grab drive to anywhere. Here, keep the artifacts safe. I guess we'll meet back at the lodge after. Noel and Vladimir are right. The artifacts need a new home. We all feel like we've been kicked into the ground a million times over, but I think I have something. I'm serious. If I may, I know our encounter with the Hunter is the last thing anyone wants to talk about right now, but he said something that I can't get out of my mind. Unity. Do you remember that? Because he was stopping us implying that we were getting closer to it. The thing is, I've heard that word before. It's an important concept in Keeper Aquilus' speeches. The priest? Is the Sanctum Universum going to bless our little crusade of discovery? It can't be a coincidence. The Sanctum has always believed that answers are out there in the stars. Look, I know it's the longest of shots and the biggest leap of faith I could ever ask us all to take, but... Why not talk to him? It's right here in the city, just a block or so from the lodge. There's no harm in gathering more information. A visit to the Sanctum might actually be quite enlightening. Thank you. I know it's not much to go on, but something about this feels right. I'll meet you over there. When someone insults you, you want to just... Keeper Aquilus, can we have a moment? Ah, oh, Mateo. It's been too long. How are your parents? Your mother's still struggling with that Azalea garden? No, she figured that out a while ago. Had to adjust the pH levels in the soil. But, Keeper, I didn't come to catch up. Oh. Well, what's on both your minds? Oh, yeah. How humanity comes together. Uh, how we are to love each other, even as our universe becomes even more complex. That's not exactly what we mean. Keeper, when you talk about unity, well, does it mean anything else? Something secret? Perhaps you should talk about this inside.
Oh, now that we have a little privacy, why don't you tell me exactly what it is that brought you two here? They're like nothing we've ever seen, Keeper. Gravitational distortion, sub-audio harmonic sequencing, unidentifiable energy fluctuations. Uh, I caught half of that. So, these things are unusual? Even in your experience? There have always been mysteries that seem to defy our understanding of the universe. Beyond rational thought, we enter life as an act of someone else's faith in us. There's no way of knowing who we will become, and yet, the risk is made anyway. So, you've pushed into the unknown, not knowing where it would take you. And it's brought you here. I think I can. If you're willing to find your way in the dark for a bit longer, I can give you a path to discovering its meaning. There's an old story, far older than the Sanctum Universum, of someone who walked the settled systems and saw every corner of it. This pilgrim claimed he found the true meaning of unity. I always thought of it as just a parable for trying to bring humanity together, but Maybe it's more. In my story, the pilgrim met the founders of the House of Enlightenment and the enigmatic cult of the Varun, and he gave them each a part of the truth. Then he goes to his final resting place to live out the rest of his days in contemplation of infinitum addendum his addition or contribution to the infinite. But what if the story isn't a metaphor, but a code, a way of finding the pilgrim again, or at least his grave? Yes, something must be there. I just can't put my finger on it. Maybe the answer will become clear when we have more. The House of Enlightenment and Varun have versions of this story. The Enlightened work out of the well here in New Atlantis, helping the poorest citizens find a better life for themselves. Varun worshippers are more enigmatic, but there is a lone zealot that was captured recently for attacking UC ships. I visited her a couple of times. Hopefully, she'll be willing to talk to you as well. I'll stay here with the Keeper. We need to catch up. And I wouldn't mind asking him a few more. Hey, I've been talking with the others, and I'd like to get everyone together to say goodbye. You know, to Sam. Thank you. It wouldn't be the same without you there. I'll have everything set up in a few days. A visitor? I have all the company I need. He knows not the truth. He sends another to ask more incessant questions. Perhaps you should hear us out before you decide to cast judgment. The Great Serpent waits in the shadows. He will entwine the universe, and all but the faithful will be made as dust. That is the truth. No more, no less. Anything you could tell us would be tremendously helpful. Yes, I have spoken to your Keeper about this. I will tell you what I told him. And then you will leave me. Jinan Varun meets the Unbeliever. He gives false prophecy to Jinan. But such is Jinan's conviction in the Great Serpent, he does not hesitate. He cuts the Unbeliever down. But the Unbeliever returns. Jinan realizes the Great Serpent is testing him, and he will not be found wanting. Four times they fight. Over 120 rotations of the planet they are on. 
Remember these four battles, Jinan, the Unbeliever says. Remember these 120 rotations. But Jinan knows this is blasphemy and delivers the killing blow. That is all. I have heard of no such thing. If it exists, it is a shadow that the Great Serpent casts to deceive the Faithless. Then we are done. Leave me. We run a number of social programs, from financial aid to food banks. If it's about the financial or food assistance programs, we are backlogged. Don't worry, we're doing everything we can. Oh, you're not. Sorry. Can I help you? We don't mean to be intrusive. Any information you could provide would be very useful. Listen, I've talked about this with him a ton of times, and there's no record of a unity pilgrim. But since you both insist, our early records are mostly administrative. Humanitarian projects, group counseling notes, charity expenditures. But there is a series of exchanges the founding members recorded in a lot of detail. It's the closest thing I have to what Aquilus is describing. A man walks into the first house of enlightenment. The founding members just call him the Drifter. So they think he's a charity case at first, but no. The Drifter asks them a bunch of questions. If your philosophy is built on an individual's own morality, what about the second person? That second person might disagree. Isn't the problem of two what you're really looking for? And the founders respond, each individual must understand how the second person lifts them up. All of human effort is a story of cooperation pushing us forward. And it kind of goes on like that. He comes back every week for a year. Same conversation every time. Second person this, the problem of do that. It's part of our core principles. There's no God pushing us to do good for some eternal reward. We have to help each other because we choose to. If no one takes responsibility for making the settled systems better, then we're just leaving it to the tyrants to bully the rest of us. Honestly, I think the founding members made it all up. There was a little more hesitation being openly atheist in the early days. I think they were experimenting with writing their own scripture. Fortunately, that got abandoned pretty quick. After the records of the Drifter end, you never see anything like it again. Besides what the Keeper would say about it, sounds like a gathering point, or a center. Or, in mathematics, it would mean one, like the one, the first or the beginning. Always happy to help. If you'll excuse me, I've got a lot of aid efforts to coordinate. Well, you're back. What did you learn? Was there something hidden in their stories, like we thought? If there really is a location the Pilgrim wanted us to find, those do sound awfully like coordinates. What else did you learn? Hmm. Planets are often named by number. That second might mean the second planet in the system. Was there anything else? Yes. What he added to infinity. Maybe that points to a name. If we're looking for his resting place, we'd need to know the name of the star system, wouldn't we? Let's see. We have something that could be coordinates. Something that could point to a planet in the system. But what's the name of the system? Infinitum addendum. What if we break down the parts? No systems named finite or add. That just leaves in and dumb. <laughs> well, that's certainly how I feel. Yes, that's it. The second planet in Indum. At four and one hundred twenty. That's where you'll find the pilgrim's resting place. And from there, maybe you'll find the true meaning of unity. Before you go, 
You've now spoken to many different perspectives in our universe. In a way, you'll be carrying their philosophies with you on this journey. I know you're looking for a specific unity, but if you had to guess what it was, what interpretation would you give it? Ah, but what makes something like that holy? Gravity is also a force that brings things together. Should that be sanctified? It is one of the great contradictions of belief. We feel the presence of something out there, but we insist that it is also everywhere. So you think this word unity describes that divine unknowableness that the pilgrim searched for? Ancient humans thought the concept of gravity was miraculous. Until we know more about the unity, we also could be jumping to the wrong conclusions. Well, I won't keep you any longer. This has been fun, I have to admit. Go, find your truth. Whoever lived at this homestead seemed to have settled in for the long haul.
myself. Constellation Ship, you weren't invited to this meeting, but much of our conversation has been about you. It's only fitting you should join us. I will personally guarantee your safety as long as you come in peace. And think of it as a ceasefire meeting. You're one shot at getting those answers you must desperately want. Introduction. Your success is unprecedented. Before you came, we were just discussing how continued use of force against you is unwise. We are not a monolithic people. The Starborn are individuals. Some are united in cause. Others are in it for themselves. We are all in it for ourselves. Some of us are just more honest. The emissary threatened your ship, demanded you hand over your artifact. How is that so different from what I did? We needed to warn you off. Every encounter with one of our kind could spell disaster. For whom, exactly? I say whoever can collect them should. Yes. Let's talk about what really matters. The Unity. You are on the path to it. It is a place, a gateway. It is where we were reborn. So, uh... I gotta say, this part is more awkward than I thought. Hiding my face was way easier. I'm not who you think I am. This universe is only the first one you've been to. I've seen hundreds. Where I came from, I was the one who ran to the eye. I left you behind to protect the artifacts. And the hunter killed you. One of me, at least. I collected the remaining artifacts. And they opened the way to the center of my universe and the doorway to an infinite number of others. That is the Unity. When I stepped into it, I became a Starborn. It's how I've entered other worlds, including yours. They are all connected. And that's the problem. All the artifacts are needed to complete the armillary and open the way to the Unity. In every universe, the Starborn fight over them. Innocent people die. You've witnessed the power granted by the Temples, the anarchy that can be unleashed. Someone has to decide who should get them. Here it comes. The Emissary tells you only the worthy should enter heaven. You're twisting what I mean. They're hypocrites. They use the chaos caused by the hunt for the artifacts to establish an order where they decide who's worthy. 
I attacked your lodge because I wanted the artifact, and you held me off. You got away. That wasn't some morality play. You didn't survive because of righteousness. You won because of persistence, luck, and skill. As I have done countless times. I was also human once. But what does it matter who or what I was when eternity is within your grasp? It means I've seen thousands of universes, collected their artifacts, been to their temples. You have a small taste of their power, but it keeps going. You're learning. My other self wants you to walk the path he walks, to give up, to appreciate the universe you have. Easy for a person who has seen everything, done everything. I think you should see it for yourself. You've never come this far. Not in all the universes I've seen. The path to the unity is opening to you. You're going to tip the scales one way or another. Better your hand be on one of our sides. Bingo! I want a truce. Between all three of us. I will give you some time to think over which approach to the unity is the one you want. Mine. Were the Hunters. Yes. Let's see how willing you are to live under someone else's rules. Just remember, one of us isn't trying to judge you. I'm sure you have more questions. Ask. The Emissary and their kind only want to control you. They enter the Unity, take artifacts from others, employ force, all the things I do. I am many things, but I would never tell anyone what to do with their gifts. That is your decision, not someone else's. The Emissary wants to become the judge of who gets to enter, but the Unity itself doesn't judge. To see what would happen, of course. You might not understand just how many times I've done this. Usually, you're the one who ends up dead, and whoever cries over your body goes on to become the Emissary. Sometimes I manage to get you all bunched up and take care of the problem in one go. And sometimes the Emissary has gotten to me first, and I never arrive. Hundreds and hundreds of variations of me, packing through Constellation, and it's almost never you. You making it to your ship on your own, that's new. I took it as a sign. I don't get many of those anymore. I've simply found that it's the quickest way. Talking, forming alliances, waiting for the right moment to commit theft. It's all so tiresome. I'll admit, you getting away has been the most interesting thing to happen in quite some time. As soon as I realized what had happened, I knew I needed to wait until this meeting with the Emissary. To decide what to do about you. Whoever created the artifacts and built those temples is playing a game with us. One whose prize is access to the center of all creation. There are no rules. Whoever gets all the pieces wins. And I've won. Over and over. I don't kill for the unity. I find the easiest pathway to it. No, we always 
end up having this meeting at this time. But it's the usual affair. Can we make peace? No. Oh, how tragic. Honestly, I was beginning to wonder why I kept tending. And it's bad habit I started a long time ago. Perhaps I just like meeting the emissary to gloat. <laughs> but you have provided something quite new to talk about. Maybe you're a random die roll. Or maybe the Unity is finally responding to all my hard work. I know we're not the same people we met in our universes. Still, it's good to see you again, old friend. It is not an easy experience to describe. But the Unity will speak to you. Offer you the chance to become Starborn. You will be leaving this universe behind to be reborn. Everything you were before will be gone. Maybe that's why it offers the choice. Compassion? Or is it testing us? Different. I never know who you are when I meet a new version. But so much of you stays the same. It's hard, but each universe is precious in its own way. Mine will never have its original you in it again. As yours won't have its real me. You've seen the terror the Hunter causes. Every time a Starborn goes through the Unity, they get more artifacts, find more temples, gain more power. We can't let more like him abuse these gifts to destroy whatever's in their way. When all the artifacts are assembled, the device they create is called the Armillary. In many ways, it's a model of the multiverse itself. Through it, you can reach the Unity. And from there, you can become Starborn. Before you leave, I want to give you something. A way to another artifact, but also a lesson in how dangerous they can be. Seek the moon of Old Earth. There are secrets there you must discover for yourself. Here. To open the way. And I am sorry we have not always been forthcoming. I hope you will see what I have seen. You should also talk to your colleagues in Constellation. I am sure they have gathered more information on the remaining artifacts in the fringes of space. Part of me wonders what they will all say about what you have learned. But I will leave that to you. Mateo told us about your pilgrim's voyage. You found it, didn't you? The meaning of unity. Wait, say that again? Multiple universes? You can't possibly mean what I think you mean. Let's take a step back. This is everything we've been building towards. And the implications are... a lot to take in. Could you explain the part about multiple universes one more time for everyone? Yes, I wouldn't mind a little more detail. And that's why the Starborn want the artifacts so desperately. They're the keys to unlocking the infinite. I don't even want to think about the physiological changes you'd need to travel between universes. Plus what it would do to the mind? Enlightenment? Or oblivion? Like the Hunter. You have the opportunity to reach the closest thing to your god that might exist. And you're second-guessing it? One doesn't approach the afterlife without some trepidation. 
You're right. We have to see the unity for ourselves. I know this has been a lot for everyone to take in, but we finally have answers. Let's make the best of them. Uh, not to make a sharp turn in a grand tale, but I got the eye fixed up. Bruised, but still blinking. Let me know when you're ready to follow up on what it's seen. These last glimpses from the eye are from the farthest fringes of known space. Could be the only remaining pieces outside the hands of the Stargon. Catch a smile out there. Anything I can help you with? I'm sure you can find something you like. things from out here and you go do what you need to do just be careful Chief of Security. If you'll follow me, I'll show you to the director. We'll take the back way. Here, you can see our lovely storage area. Don't touch anything. So, uh, Nisha has been too bold. One minute, you're following me, and then you're just gone. Minute later, you pop in out of nowhere, looking like you were in the middle of a fight. In our storage room. I should have never let you inside. What is this? Some kind of stealth tick? Who are you working for? <sighs> Look, I don't know what's going on. Let's get you to the director. Maybe she can figure this out. Oh, oh, thank God. Finally, someone came. 
The distress signal. You picked up the distress signal, right? It's been so long. I'm out of food, out of water, but I made it. I... Wait, how did you get in here? Hughes? Ethan Hughes? But he's dead. No. No, no, no. This doesn't make any sense. Unless... The accident. Maybe... Maybe this is a side effect of the accident. If the probe is still feeding power to the distortion, then... <sighs> Three months ago, I was calibrating an experiment in our high-energy research lab. There was an accident. An explosion. It caused a gas leak. Sparked a fire. I was trapped in the control room. There was nothing I could do. They're... They're all dead. The lab was built around a xenolith with a dense metallic ob... Wait! She's, she's back! All right, we're on our way up. Hughes out. I was just filling in the director. Let's keep moving. If anything happens, the director's office is on the second floor. Patel, research director. And this is our chief scientist, Maria Hughes. Ethan said you disappeared right in front of him. Twice now? Three times? Director, you can't be taking this seriously. Look, I don't know who you are or what you're doing here, but there has to be a rational explanation for all of this. Excuse me? That is quite a claim. What makes you think that? Tell us about this other universe. Raphael? Raphael died in the accident. He... Wait. Gas fire. Gas fire. The leak. Director, there was a hydrogen leak right after the accident. It was contained in a minute or two. But... If it hadn't been, it could well have caused an explosion. Another universe, though. That's a lot to swallow. An artifact? You mean the source of the distortion? You know something about it? Really? That's all you're gonna say? No, no. Fair enough. You have a prior connection with them, then. Maybe that's why this is only affecting you. <sighs> this facility and the research level two kilometers beneath us were built to study a gravitational distortion. This artifact and the field it creates. Three months ago, our chief engineer, Raphael, was calibrating an experimental probe when... Something went wrong. We still don't know what happened. There was a series of explosions, and somehow, it's still running. That would make sense. That's why the field strength keeps increasing. We have a control unit for the probe. After the accident, I tried to use it to shut down the system, but the kill switch isn't responding. We could shut it off manually, but the entire research level is locked down. We can't even get down there. How? I told you the research level's locked down. We can't even use the damn elevator. What? Clever. In this other universe, Raphael survived. He made it back from the lab, so clearly his elevator works. 
take it, and you might be able to shut down the experiment. This is crazy. But first, we have to do something about your shifting. We can't shut down the probe, but we might be able to adjust some of the other parameters. It's risky. We don't know what we're dealing with, but... <sighs> All right. It's worth a try. Then it sounds like we have a plan. you what happened you disappeared and the ceiling caved in and and uh, i thought i'd finally lost it what how look if you think things are bad up here the research level is even worse i barely made it out and that was months ago i don't understand any of this if i hadn't seen you disappear with my own eyes I wouldn't have believed it. I... Okay, okay. You're my ticket out of here. We'll do this your way. We can get out through the pantry. Here's the key. I'll back you up, I guess. to clear this out, assuming the rest of the building doesn't come down on top of us. I was in the lab, working on the frequency calibration for the probe. I was walking out of the control room when it happened. I heard the tanks rupture, the alarm sound. I only had a second to react. I jumped back into the control room. The doors sealed. I was safe. From the gas, the fire, everything. But I was trapped. There was nothing I could do to stop it. If I had gone the other way, maybe I could have made it to the ventilation controls. Killed the system. Even if it killed me. I don't know. I don't want to think about it. They're a native species. We had an electric pulse field to keep them out. The fire took out the generators, damaged the foundation. They just keep coming. How should I know? You're the one who keeps winking in and out of existence. I just want to get out of here. Go do whatever you're going to do. I'll see if I can clear a path to the door. What? I... Oh, it's you. You realize you just popped into my locked office. So much for security protocols. Uh, sure. Down the hall. Take the stairs next to the atrium. Yeah, let me get the doors for you. And done. Is there anything else you need? Uh, yes. Kataxi. Nasty things. The original survey team ran across them. You're welcome to read the old logs if you want. Yeah, I'll unlock the terminal for you. What, did you get lost in the hallway? Ah. Uh, Alright. This is the probe control unit. Most of these controls aren't responding. I'm going to very carefully adjust the settings I can. There's no way to tell what's about to happen. Pay attention and be ready for anything. I'll begin by adjusting the energy feed of the electron beam array. We're at 93 terabolts. Calibrating to 95, 97, 100. Ugh, nothing. Let's try the other way. 91, 89. What the? Okay, okay. It looks safe to approach, but what in the world? It's a micro 
distortion. Flux pattern matches the distortion in the lab. The setting is just exposing it somehow. Hmm. Step into the distortion, please. It's possible. That's what I want to test. If that is what's happening, what does that mean? How many of these distortions are there? All around us, all this time, and we've never noticed. <sighs> Nothing. No, hold on. There's a slight pattern change. Some kind of resonance. All right, stay there. Let me turn the beat back up for you. What happened? Are you all right? So the lower setting causes the distortions to manifest and the higher causes you to shift. That seems promising. Keep it on the lower setting until you want to shift and you should be able to avoid any more accidents. I'd give you my control unit, but it looks like you already have one from the other universe. Love to take a look at that when this is all over. Right. If you can get down to the research level, you need to make your way to the high energy research lab. Disengage the power interlocks, then pull the emergency shutdown to stop the probe. That should finally put an end to all this. Oh, and before you go, the director wanted to speak with you. It really is just down the hall. Well then, all set? If you need supplies, I've asked Dr. Barakova to take care of you. It's the least I can do after everything we've put you through. Before you go, there is one other thing we should discuss. If this experiment is the cause of your shifting, when you shut it down, the shifting will stop. What happens then? To you and to us. Nishina is a closed system. Two potential states held in tension. When you shut down the experiment, that tension will resolve. You are the outside observer in the system. Whichever reality you are in, at that moment, is what will become real. For you, and your universe at least. The question is, which will you choose? Hmm. If this were a choice between my life and Raphael's, I would ask you to save him. But as the director of the station, I am responsible for the lives of my staff. Thirty people. People with families, careers, futures ahead of them. In this universe. It's not an easy decision, but... I am grateful. Thank you. Now, it's time you are going. With the network offline, we can't shut down the security system on the research level, so... You can expect some resistance. Be careful. Ethan? Unlock the elevator lobby, please. Ma'am, research level is still locked down. I'm aware of that. I... All right. Done. Good luck, dear. It's been a fascinating day. Tatiana Barakova, station's doctor. This is not a public medical facility, but the director has ordered me to assist you nonetheless. I can spare a few med packs. Beyond that, I am not your therapist, your psychologist, or your cosmetologist. If there's anything else you need, ask. My journal? Have you been in my quarters? Who do you think you are? The director may have given you run of this station, but I... Wait. Wait. What is this? This entry... It's mine, but... I didn't write this. And the scorch marks. God. Yes. Yes, I do. I can spare a few more supplies. And I'll give you a break on anything else you need. Really? <sighs> I would have thought you were tougher than that.
fine. Heavy seats. All right. Done. Be doing research levels back online definitely some damage but it could be a lot worse we will have to replace a few robots yes well that's a small price to pay all things considered this is a lot to take in artifacts multiple universes look on the bright side dear just imagine the papers you'll publish if anyone even believes this I am curious though why did you decide to stay here, with us? Maybe so. Still, it must have been a hard decision. Our next supply ship will be arriving soon. I'll have a full report ready for them. For now, I'd like to extend our gratitude, and what compensation I can offer for everything we put you through. Thank you. This has been a truly remarkable experience. Forgive me for pulling you aside again, but, well, there's so much to process right now. The Emissary, the Hunter, the Unity, an entire multiverse. I can't even begin to wrap my head around it all. I don't know where to begin. The fact that we are the origin of the Starborn. Humans literally reborn by entering the Unity. The same, yet different. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I feel like most of the knowledge we've amassed in the last few centuries about the universe has just been made obsolete. Yes, that's exactly right. Humans are clearly a victim of their own success. We've been pushing further and further outwards from our home, when we should have spent more time being prepared for the consequences. Our current problem relates closely to the nature of humans as a species. This rushed curiosity has led us to enter the Unity and become Starborn. But it has made a difference. Here we are, caught in the middle of some sort of needlessly violent crusade between the Hunter and the Emissary. You'd think that a technologically advanced society would have evolved past petty squabbling over something like the artifacts. It almost makes me wonder if entering the Unity has done them more harm than good. No, no, that's not it at all. When you pass into whatever lies beyond, we don't know what will become of you. Will you remember your life as you knew it? Will the hunger to collect the artifacts consume your life like it's clearly consumed the Starborn? I'm just as curious to find out what's on the other side as well, but that's not the point. As the Chair of Constellation, I want all of us to have this opportunity to explore the Unity. It would be the pinnacle exploration of our lives. However, after we enter the Unity, we'll likely... evolve. You and I, as we stand here right now, 
will essentially cease to exist. The honest truth is that, well, you're the love of my life, and I can't bear to lose you. I know. Damn it. I know. Listen. I realize nothing that I say is ever going to change your mind or diminish the enticement of this incredible opportunity. All I ask is that you research the facts before you blindly stumble off into the unknown. Thank you. Well, I suppose I've ruined the moment again, haven't I? <laughs> getting quite good at that lately. I'll let you get back to whatever you were doing. Just think what we discussed. I know I will. excitement of breaching into the unknown, of lighting the darkness. But it is harder to stare into the face of the cost. That all of our progress is built on top of the lives of those who dared. And that we owe them the courage to continue our work in their memory. Thank you, Sarah. If anyone else would like to say a few words. I hope this is all okay. Between fixing things up and sending out messengers and getting all the paperwork done, it's not much. Good. I... Good. Sorry, if I talk any longer, I'm gonna start crying. Um, could you excuse me? I don't often speak about what I believe in. It seems so redundant with how I live. But death is one of those occasions where it's hard not to look inward. Our friend is gone. There's no afterlife or second meetings. No god in heaven that is curating a perfect ending for them. So it's up to us. We are what lives on. If the pain of loss inspires us to greater action, then that is the good that comes from this. 
Humanity is what truly creates our world. We are the ones that judge things to be good or evil, joyful or mournful. Let us take responsibility for it. Let us remember what we have lost. Walter, are you part of the house? Engine spin up time almost complete. Total time 5 minutes 22 seconds. Ride on schedule. How are the helium 3 valves holding, Nova? We double checked the leakage concerns this morning before the launch. All signs green. Any changes to the calculation sequence from Voltaire? No changes since we uploaded the last figures yesterday. It's a clean shot from here to Jupiter. One day the computer will be on board the spaceship. Just imagine that! One miracle of science at a time, Canaveral. Counting down in five, four, three, two, one. Canaveral, are you reading? All clear, Nova. Indicators look good. The ship should be cruising Jupiter's orbit right now. Visual confirmation will be possible when... <laughs> 32 minutes. Afraid the speed of light is on the slow side these days. <laughs> How does it feel to break the laws of physics, Canaveral? We're all 
pretty excited down here in NASA, I won't lie. Excited enough to tell me where you got the original data? Not in a million years. Judith Tatien. The recent delivery from Mars is unsettling. I was expecting rock samples or maybe fossils of microbial life. Instead, Dr. Victor Isa comes with two members of the military. Everything they have brought back is under wraps. What could a theoretical physicist need with a sample from Mars? Station log. Dr. Judith Tatien. I have been trying to cozy up to Dr. Isa. Victor to see what is going on. His team has completely commandeered one of the labs with those two military hand refs, checking who comes in and out. I joked that maybe he found a little gray man who was doing an autopsy, and he grew very pale. Two days later, he sends me a request asking for more information on my background in material science, metallurgical engineering. Oh, we have a meeting tomorrow. I, I think I'm being invited into the lab. Station log. Dr. Judith Satin. I have never been so nervous since I defended my dissertation. Four hours talking to Victor and his team about theoretical metals, atomic bonding, even a half hour divergence into magnetism that I'm pretty sure was just to throw me off the trail of what we were actually talking about. Then I got to see the lab. I. I don't know how much I should say. The periodic table just got thrown out the window. I just don't understand where these calculations came from. There's something wrong with the math? I think it's quite straightforward. That's not what I'm asking. We've had no success extracting even a sample of material from the object. No explanation for the gravitational effects. No motion graph to explain its harmonic frequencies. I can't even establish a melting point. Judith. But you've had me building these prototype colliders for months. And now you want me to bump helium-3 into it based on this equation you've written on a goddamn napkin? I just need you to trust me. I have been trusting you. We keep slamming our heads against the brick wall, getting nothing. And you keep coming up with something new to try. Like, you know what's going to happen. Where are you getting your information, Victor? I'm sorry, Judith. I... Look, not here, okay? Somewhere off base. I'll tell you everything. But I'm not lying, okay? We're going to discover something important here. I promise.
Project Log. Dr. Victor Isa. We turned on the prototype today. The gravitational field around it began to fold as we long suspected. Complete reversal of gravitational pull was observed on dozens of loose objects around the lab. I'm setting up a meeting with the directors to propose a larger test. The prototype proves we don't need the original anymore. But further work is going to have to take place in space. Somewhere with abundant helium-3 and with a civilian partner. Someone with access to large-scale manufacturing resources and computational equipment. Engineering gravitational folds pulling the far side of the solar system closer to us? It's all going to be possible. Project Log, Dr. Judith Petzian. I watched the Gravjet test from the moon today. It was the first time we were able to talk to the team at Nova Galactic directly. So many things were under wraps before, but now everyone wants all the publicity they can get. I'm already seeing proposals for manufacturing androids of drives, expeditions to Alpha Centauri and beyond. It's also overwhelming. Worrying. It could take years, decades, before we know what all these side effects of operating a grav drive can be. But no one wants to hear that right now. Like a bunch of pioneers racing towards the edges of the frontier without knowing about the grizzly bears in the mountains. ancient history now. Only thing we're doing these days is launching weather satellites. Guess this is as good a retirement as any. Now Project Demeter, you want our help manufacturing scanners to better track these new meteorological patterns we've seen. Our guess is that the poles might be naturally shifting, causing some gravitational fluctuations that are throwing off our old models. Why do you need the scanning tolerances to be so small? What are you trying to find? I just want to be sure. It's, it's not like we're doing much these days anyway. The glory days are over. Why not give ourselves a challenge before they write us off in the history books?
When I touched the anomaly, I experienced 12 days of lost time. I met myself. He told me everything that has since come true. The grav drive equations, the tests on the moon, Earth's atmosphere sputtering away because of what we had done. But he also told me about a city thriving on a planet orbiting a distant star. Observation. We've arrived on the surface of Earth. We need to discuss what you found. And it looks like other Starborn got here before us. So, you might have company. Understand now why I asked you to come here. The artifacts unlocked the secret of interstellar travel at the cost of Earth. An easy trade, honestly. Why have one world when you can have all the settled systems? Every grav drive in the settled systems was built on technology that came from an artifact that was discovered on Mars. But these early drives shook the gravity field surrounding Earth. Eventually, the atmosphere started to slowly sputter away into space. That is why Earth is uninhabitable. The artifact gave the scientists a greater understanding of time and space, but not the wisdom to see where that would lead. The settled systems wouldn't exist without the artifacts, in other words. We owe what happened here in NASA a great debt. Don't you see? The power of the artifact forced humanity to the stars. They didn't get to make a choice. How many would have chosen Earth? What gave Victor Isa the right to choose for them? You see the hypocrisy in what the Emissary is saying, right? They don't want to rob people of their free will, but then they steal the artifacts for themselves. In the wrong hands, the power of the artifacts can make anyone a tyrant. That is why we watch over them. The only thing you are watching out for is yourself. Join me, old friend. We can collect the final pieces together. Oh, no you don't. You're not her old friend, remember? You're from another universe. Don't try to manipulate her. Okay. I couldn't win you over on philosophy. How about pragmatism? I'm more powerful than the Emissary. Than any other Starborn. And you might not understand why, but I want you to succeed. You've never gotten this far before. I need to see what happens to you. Yes, I 
also like picking winners. Fine. You two have made your choice. The usual place. The buried temple. Oh yes, we'll be there. I'm sorry it's come to this. You and I better have a chat. Talk through the next steps. I have a little favor I want to ask you too. Oh, I'm not missing this. <laughs> I'll be meeting you there. Oh, it's a little playground where Starborn liked to fight over the last artifact before going to the Unity. You like it? It's got everything. If I were you, I'd find as many of the temples as I could. You'll need all the power you can get. Keeper Aquilus. My illustrious counterpart. He's a loose end that needs tying. First, he led you to my meeting with the emissary. Now, that's turned out well for me, but it's hardly good to have someone who knows your secrets hanging around. Second, I don't like him. You'll understand once you've been through a few times. Other versions of yourself have a habit of being distasteful. Well, I hate to be pushy at the beginning of this new partnership, but I need to insist. Let me take in this moment. It's not every day you get to send an assassin after yourself. <laughs> Good luck.
we're just scratching the surface. Some Starborn make a habit of using local mercenaries to build fortifications. Try to hold the rest of us off. All these defenses and the people who built them are pawns. Our true goal lies further inside. Madness and tradition, I suppose. Somehow this place started being the final proving ground. You'll probably start to understand why as we get further in. It's special. I've tried to break the habit of doing this a few times, but even I can't stop all the starborn in the universe from converging on this spot. It's annoying. Rule one. Don't trust the dead. The powerful starborn can resurrect corpses to fight for them. Nearly as well as when they were alive. And the big military base isn't just for show. Robots, turrets, security doors. Expect everything. jobs. Client is on his way. Ah, there you are. Enjoy your little jaunt to the multiverse. There will be a few more up ahead. It's a multiverse. Both of those questions are probably true somewhere in the infinite. But if you were worried that you just murdered someone from your past, then I think the odds are low. It's all a blur to me these days. Although my favorites are the ones related to my time on Earth. I'm older than you might think. Yes. You didn't tell me we have visitors. We have visitors. Welcome. What's mine is yours. Well, no, it's still mine, but you get what I mean. I'm impressed. How did you... Did you... You don't deserve the final artifact. 
This life you've led, you're nothing but a thief, an opportunist, a liar. It's more than credits that the Unity will demand of you. You think you have a right to the infinite? You're nothing! Guards! Where'd you go? Come on, you can make it! Barely stepped on the juryman's road with us. Can't see another soul off to the void so soon. No. No! I'll pour one out to the blackest sea for you, Rook. This ghost? What kind of cruelty is this? This some starborn trick? Come to mock me before you twist the blade? Multiple universes? You're a visitor jumping through the gates of space and time? Not sure if you're just a reflection of a shattered brain, but okay, I get your meaning. Well, ghost from the other side, I'll keep what you said rolling around in my head for a spell. But for now, wouldn't mind if you gave me a bit. I just lost a friend. Time since I've laughed, 
If there is even a faint glimmer of the same person I knew, I will honor their wishes. Here. Now go. us, a great team. Now the unity awaits. Hmm, probably. But the similarities between universes blur after a while. It makes the differences all the sharper. Yes, you're right. Here, you've earned these. Once all the artifacts are together, the way to the unity will open. Then, you and I will be walking into the infinite. I'll be making myself at home on your ship from here on out. I want to make sure I'm nearby for the big moment. You made it. I hope you're enjoying the view. I never get tired of staring at it. Eternity. It's natural that your mind would go there. And it's not a simple question to answer. You stand now at the very center of space and time. Center being the best word to grant you understanding, but still not entirely accurate. The unity is what was, what is, and what shall be. It is nowhere and everywhere. Nothing and everything. It is the unity. 
Any other meaning is entirely up to you. All of you. A thought occurs. Can anyone ever truly experience reality outside oneself? All of time and space filters through a singular perspective. I am as much you as you are part of everything. All points connect to here. When a star is born or dies, its existence beats through the heart of this place. The unity. I have seen all you are, have been, and could be. Do you feel like you've lived a good life? Is there anything you regret? That's good. You'll need that clarity for what comes next. In order to become Starborn, you must give the universe one last thing. Yourself. That intangible part of you, that something that makes you unique amongst the infinite, will explode like a supernova. A part of you will fuse with the essence of this universe, while another part leaves it behind forever. Do you understand what I mean? This one final leap will change this universe forever. Even as you leave it behind. Unknowingly, you just answered your own questions. For who creates things but creators? That is what they have been named throughout the endless circle of time. Are they one or many? Human or alien? Terrestrial or celestial? One day, you might even meet the creators. But not this day. As for the why, so that you could ask that very question. So that you could stand before me for time immemorial and delve into the mysteries of the unending cosmos. Much like the death of a star creating new kinds of matter, so will part of your being become fused with the unity itself. That part is what becomes starborn and crosses into the multiverse. Through your eyes, it will be as if waking up from a dream. Walk into the gate of light, and you will become starborn. Everything will vanish, and you will awaken somewhere else. But, that isn't your only potential destiny. You could turn around, walk away from the unity until the stars fade away, and you will wake up on your ship, in your universe. You could live out the life you have. I've enjoyed speaking to you once again. All of you. Every version that is here in the unity right now. Go out into the stars. As you consider stepping towards infinity, I offer you a glimpse into what will happen to the universe you may be leaving, as the essence of who you are is spread throughout space and time. The hunter is reborn once again. His ethic of expediency and individual will spreads throughout the universe he leaves behind. Many will find the courage to rise and seize power from those who have it, for good or ill. Constellation membership who stays behind Will in time published their data about the discovery of the artifacts, the Starborn, and the Unity. Space exploration across the settled systems is given new life as people search for hope out there in the stars. Your lover, Sarah Morgan, eventually chooses to be reborn herself. Your commitment to each other bolsters all relationships in the settled systems. Marriages blossom, more children are born who want to be explorers. Although you leave this universe behind, a new universe awaits you. Who will you be in this one? What choices will you make?
Gostou do vídeo? Tem muito mais no canal Gameoteca. Te vejo por lá. Um tchau da Luna.